Do you smell what the rock is cooking? I smell it. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? I smell it. Come on. Come on. Do you smell what the yeah. rock is cooking? Yeah, fine. The rock has come back. Laying down the smack on you monkey crap candy coated axe. Enter the squared circle with the great one. The most electrifying moves. Don't touch the station. Children and their children, they all chant with the millions upon millions of rock fans. Get ready for the square dance. Here's your chance for a can of ass whooping from the people's champ. If you smell what the rock's cooking. If you smell what the rock's cooking. If you smell what the rock's cooking. Do you smell what the rock's cooking? Check yourself, you don't know me Jabroni, go back to the gym, you're too bony uh, So you want a piece of the rock, make it crumble In these WrestleManias, kid, we roll your rumble Welcome back to the Why So Series Podcast I'm your host, Brandon, Devin and Micah with us And today, we have a special guest uh, to preview WrestleMania and talk a whole bunch of other stuff, we have Rich Fan from the PW Tours Deep Dive. What's up, Rich? Not much. Looking forward to talking with all you guys. It's been a minute. So I know Brandon I've been able to talk to and have on the Deep Dive, but Devin and Mike, okay, we got something. We got a, we got yeah. a scoop. <laughs> We're excited about it. We're excited about it. You're the hardest working man around this time, sir. We were just thankful that you stopped by and blessed us with your presence. I agree. Oh, yeah, and that. I had to go old school with. It. Remember that WWF, WWF Aggression album? Oh yes. I gotta yeah. go back and listen to it because the two songs I've heard recently was this one and, and the, the Big D- Show joint and the DX one, and they were all good. And I'm like, hold on, was this an actual good album? <laughs> Yo, the crazy shit about that is how my man Jr. was plugging this shit. Because JR was hit with it. He was like, we got some hot beats for you. Like, oh, yeah. Like- <laughs> so, Rich, you know how on the um, Brian and Vinny show, they are watching, uh, like, all the Raws and Nitros? So, yeah. I've been kind of following along. So, when Devin comes out here, we watch, like, the Nitro that they're watching that week. And so, uh, we're in 2000. That's when all this came out. So, like, JR's, like, plugging a music video with Method Man. And just, like, hearing Jim Ross talk about Method Man is hilarious in itself very very but today we are here to talk uh wrestlemania weekend with rich rich will be in wrestlemania this year uh devin uh well i went the last two years devin went with me last year rich has been how many years in a row you've been uh this will be i think my fifth year in a row fifth five years in a row this year is in new york new jersey um, so we're probably going to just go over some of the big matches on Mania, on, on TakeOver, and, but before we do that, uh, actually before we get to WrestleMania and all of that, um, we kind of had a curveball dropped on us last night and today with, uh, John Oliver on last week tonight, he did his main, uh, monologue on the WWE and some of their promotional, not promotional tactics, but their, uh, employee relations tactics, how they treat, well, they're not even employees. How they treat yeah. their wrestlers, their performers. Uh, and, oh, my God. I'm sorry, Brandon. Yeah. They went full spotlight. Big Dave got full spotlight. Oh, God. I'm about to pull this up. Just so <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on. Hold on. Is he going to get it? Is they just gave it to him. He's, he dropped a fire promo. They cut the lights out, let him cut the promo, and now he got the spotlight walking up with his pimp shades. Yeah, those shades are dope. Oh, no. Okay. See, now you're making I'm sorry. Okay. There's, yeah, we got. I got it now. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I, I got so distracted because I'm angry. But yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah. Last last week tonight, John Oliver did a, a piece on the WWE and their how they treat their wrestlers. And Rich, I just wanted to get uh, your thoughts on the piece because I know you've talked about this before in general, and we kind of talked about it on the deep dive one time. Uh, but what do you <laughs> think about this being brought into the spotlight? Uh, uh, no pun intended, uh, the week of WrestleMania. I think it makes sense. I think this is the best time because they have the most eyes, most lights on them, so to speak. And so I, I you know how I feel. I think just like with every other sport, if you're making that much money, you should have, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they'll ever get to like 50% of the revenue, but they definitely can get 
more than six. Mm -hmm. Like, and so for me, it's been the argument and it's a lot of people. Like I just saw someone put it up on Twitter and I agree with it. You know, the same folks who talk about, they want a time off for lip wrestlers and all this other stuff also say they don't like, but they, uh, Batista. they don't like Batista. They don't like the rock. They don't, they don't like, like anyone that's a part time. Yeah, part timers. Yeah. And then now you've got, you've got this other subset of WWE fans that are coming strong with, well, if they got full time pensions and they got all this other stuff, it, their insurance would be so high that they wouldn't want to pay the premiums. And I'm like, listen, you're on that $15 minimum wage will mean I have a $7 Big Mac <laughs> argument and I'm not here for it. Right. <laughs> right. They had a $960 million profit last year. They can afford it. They can afford it, especially when you pulled in 50, mil, 50 to 100 million a visit to Saudi and Arabia. And we're only talking about 300, you know, I'm just talking about like, I guess everybody, oh, like 350, you know, employees really. You know that we're really talking about, so that's not no, even a lot. No, way less than that, because it's, it's two hundred fifty. It's two hundred fifty. Yeah, but actual... the employees for WWE do have all those things. So, oh, like, if you work okay. in, if you work up in Stanford or in some of their satellite offices, they they have health insurance and four hundred one ks and all those things. The executives have those things. Triple Eight. If you have an executive contract, this is. Uh, I mean, Deepon, we're talking about this on Twitter today, but like AEW, they're doing this thing where the executives, quote unquote, have health insurance. But some of those executives are performers. So like the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes, they're getting health insurance, even though they're performers, and that can cause an issue in the locker room. It's similar to WWE. So Triple H and Vince and Stephanie, they all have health insurance and stuff, even though Triple H is an on-air talent. But the other on-air talents, they don't have that, right? So... It's wow. really like a much smaller percentage. It's like really a much smaller number than that. And then on top of that, like Rich said, they're only paying them six percent of the of the revenue split. Like their revenue split is only six percent to ninety four percent. So like I agree a hundred percent. They should be getting much more. But even it makes it even worse that you're only paying their salaries are only costing you six percent. So you definitely have the money to pay for all the ancillary benefits. Health insurance, paid. They don't have paid time off. They don't have any of those things. That shit is crazy to me, though. Like they don't have vacation it, time. Like these are things that, like, I always talk to people. Like people, are like, oh, I'm gonna go take a vacation. I'm like, well, vacation's a privilege, right? But like, vacation's a privilege in the general world. But it shouldn't be a privilege in a company with like that, <coughs> where they're generating that type of money. That should be an expectation that you can do those types of things. Um, so another thing I want to spitball with you, Rich, is what do you think about uh, WWE implementing some type of off season to help with this? Do you think that's possible in the in the context of pro wrestling, or do you think it's kind of far fetched and not really pli uh, pliable? Now, for me, and I had someone, one of my followers on Twitter, got into a bit of an argument with me about it. I think they're already trying it with their highest profile people. Like if you think back, 2018 and going into 2019. AJ Styles had several weeks where he was just gone, not on house right. shows. And I don't think they're ever going to get to the point where you get like a solid three months off. Right. Because I do think there is something to that Triple H notion of the longer you're away, the more it hurts more again when you're doing the bumps. But I also think you can give me two weeks off and it'll still be just fine. Like AJ Styles isn't going to turn into like John Cena after a, a smooth year off. Right. And that's no offense to John, but we've seen him without being in the ring for like a long period of time. He's a clunky dude naturally, yeah. but he loses that extra something he has where he can hit a Yoshi tonic and it only looks awkward and not life threatening. Right, exactly. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. But I, I do. I, I oh, okay, talk where would you where would you put the break in? What would you have that off season break in? Would you do I would right have after a, SummerSlam? Well, no, I would have a rotational break because I think the way wrestling works is it kind of yeah. has to be year round because that's just what people are used to at this point and it'd be such a it'd be such a shock to the system for it not to be like similar like lucha underground was doing seasons and it failed now that's not the only reason that it failed but i think that was part of the reason uh, is people aren't used to that but you can do rolling breaks with different groups of wrestlers and so like when people don't show up on tv like pe like jim Cornette always says this is like 
you can't, I can't miss you until you're away, right? And so when people go away and they come back, they're usually bigger stars. But sometimes people just sleek away and you don't even notice it. Like, John Cena's been off TV for how long now? Like, months. Yeah, yeah months. A few months. And no one, it's not like this shock to the system that, like, oh, John Cena's gone. Roman Reigns went away when he had to, when he had to go fight leukemia. And for the first week or so, you noticed it. And then it just became a show that Roman Reigns wasn't on. And we were happy to see him Yo. when he came back. Uh, but what? But my point is, when you, if you strategically plan, and this would cause WWE to actually have to, like, you know, plan storylines, which you know, with Vince is like, we shouldn't like the Two Fairy being real, but it would allow them to make write more distinct storylines and get people in and out in time to rest. But I, I agree with Rich. They are starting to do that with some of the top guys and. The, the lower tier guys, they don't even work on TV all the time. So they may be working the house shows, but they're not on TV every week. So they're getting some rest. But the, the what hurts is really those those house shows, is that touring. It's those 200 nights a year. Yeah. When Shawn Michaels came back and he was only doing TV in a house show occasionally, he felt way better because he had those days off. So Randy Orton yeah, I mean, does you look too. at Cam. Look at what Cam was talking about right now with um, uh, the wildness with Kurt Angle. If you had him instead of having his retirement tour, each of these matches on Raw and SmackDown, one blow offs match at WrestleMania, he would be a far better person for it because he's well past E on the gas tank. Yeah, way past, <laughs> way past. And in fact, Kurt Angle was like when he first came back a year ago, a year and a half ago, whenever it was that first match back, he wasn't the old Kurt Angle, but he looked relatively competent. He looked like, oh, Kurt can still do some stuff. He looks all right. But his body is to he, – Kurt was messed up in 2006. Like, that's why he left WWE in the first place because he was addicted right. to pain pills because his body was so beat up. Like, so he's been hurting for a long time. But that's where I wanted to bring Mike in since you got to this early because we'll get to this at WrestleMania. But this is where I wanted us to troll Mike. So, Rich, you, you, work, at Pitt, you work at Pitt. You live in Pittsburgh. How yeah. how big of a figure is Kurt Angle in Pittsburgh? Oh, he's huge. He's a dude <laughs> where like mm -hmm. people will still talk about like I go by the hills where he was running them with his brother on his back for the Olympics, and I'm like, how? Because these are hills where it's like two percent, three percent grades, like straight up almost, and cars can't make them if there's a bit of rain on the ground. And this mf -er was running up and down and with a grown man on his back to get ready for the Olympics. So when he's around here, people lose their mind. Now, the thing is, his family is like mega Pittsburgh. So you got his brother's been involved in some things. He had another relative involved in a murder. Like, it's just, oh, really? they, so they're wilded. Like, uh, Bruce mentioned this weekend on the torch, like, Kurt is basically... I mean, I, I mean, no. I, every time someone says, I mean, no, no disrespect, something disrespectful comes out. But I really do mean no disrespect. He's the he's the dude. If he was basically the uh, the main character in Million Dollar Baby, if after he fell on the stool, he got up and kept fighting. Oh, yeah, huh. that is that's true. Because he's got yeah. like family. He's got to support. He's got, you know, ex-wives on top of ex-wives. And then he's just keep somehow the man just keeps going. I saw him. Five years ago, when I started this trip, when I was going to that New York, that New York WrestleMania. Oh wait, no, that would be third. So I've been to five of the last seven because I didn't go to New Orleans the for thirty. Okay. Um, they the, the New York one from a couple of years ago when The Rock played uh, went up against Cena in the rematch. He was on the flight with me for Impact, and he looked like he was barely gonna make it on the plane. Mm -hmm. Like he just looked like everything hurt, and I didn't have the not it wasn't even courage i didn't want to have the man like turn around and like pretend to be happy when i would say like you were one of my favorite wrestlers and it's an honor to see you and like i just appreciate you like i want you to know that i couldn't do it because i was like i don't want this man to have to talk move a lip move it a muscle because <laughs> i'm not going to be the reason he just turns the dust and that was seven years ago I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been there a long time, and now he can't turn his neck at all, like at all. Uh, he's robot man. Uh, but I said all that to bring up that Mike is actually from Pittsburgh, and somehow okay. never heard of Kurt Angle. Oh, also, wow. is this an age thing? Is this one of those things where it's an age thing, or is no. I just, am yeah. I just not? 
I'm Hurt ankle, no, bitch. Like, I don't know. How old are you? Twenty three. That it might be. It might be an age thing. See, 20, Brandon. No, no, no. Twenty three. So Mike was born in ninety six when he won the 95. Olympic gold medal. So he, yeah, I was an infant. But then he went on to be like a huge wrestling star in what? the two thousand. How old would I have been? Five. I was five. Ten. In the two, in at, at least ten. Two thousand five. I was ten. I didn't care about wrestling when I was ten. I, I don't even know what I cared about in two thousand ten. God, you make us feel so old on this show. I'm oh. sorry, you brought it up, not me. Whatever. All right. Uh, before we get into the hey, actual card, for okay, real, go hold on, time up. So, did y'all see how I didn't know how they documented Ruben, like Roman Reigns, not like being like they was not here for that shit. Like I never saw that shit because I wasn't watching wrestling because I couldn't really identify with other people. The character was putting out there, but they really didn't like that man. Like they was not here for this shit. So like for nope. him now to get the belt, like two years later, I mean actually three years later after all that booing and shit. Well, he's not like, wrestling for a belt. No, I'm just saying, but like he he got the belt eventually. You know what I mean? Oh like, yeah, he did get it eventually, and they hated him even yeah. more. Right, that shit yeah. is crazy. Yeah, they did because he's he's not the Rock. He doesn't have that. Well, like, no, but he he was never needed to be the Rock. Rich and I have talked about this a lot, the whole thing of yeah. Roman. Like, part of it's his fault, had a whole episode about but that, a yeah. lot of it is circumstance and timing and people just being mad. It's like a combination of all of it. Um, so right. Before, like, I fight yeah, with but, people all the time about the idea of, like, when you think about Roman, I mean, Cam brought it up, and it was so, like, when he said it this weekend on the Bruce Mitchell audio, like, my heart hurt because... I don't think people think of it this dark. Like, if you think about uh, Sasha and Bailey and Becky, they're fine. But Charlotte is the daughter of a dude they will turn on in a moment's notice, and it's easier for them to pretend like they're her daddy than Ric Flair is. Yeah, yeah, he said, I heard him say that. Yeah, it's true. That's dark, man. Very like, dark. They, treat, uh, they treat Charlotte like Roman. But Charlotte don't get that because she got the protection on one side of fans because she's Ric Flair's daughter and the other side because she's the Street Clothes Hall of Fame all-star mm-hmm. and just knows she she got the juice and she don't care. Roman never got to that point. You either got to not care or you got to care a lot. Roman let us in and see when, you know, when things will go wrong. You could see it on his face where he's like, y'all going to do this again? Come on. Man, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's why that post WrestleMania promo was like my favorite one, when he just stood there and looked so smug after he beat the Undertaker. He just and they yes. were booing him, and he was just so smug, and they were just kept going on and on. I was like, I like this guy, like this is good. But I don't never really had a huge problem with Roman, but I understand. I well, I would say I twenty percent understand people, but a lot of it was just he's not Daniel Bryan. We want Daniel Bryan, and. Then there was this thing where he didn't pay his dues, which I still don't understand. I know Bruce Mitchell talks about this all the time, like this idea that like you can't, like we can't like you unless you work the indies and in Ring of Honor and all the small places. Which I'm like, well, that's ridiculous. But then, but then the, the whole hypocrisy was all those people that hated Roman were like going crazy for Braun Strowman, which is how he got popular in the first place. When he's like the antithesis of everything they say they're against, even worse than Roman. Because at least Roman's an actual good wrestler. <laughs> and he and at the time, right. Braun Strowman was. I said it was ridiculous. Um, before we get into Mania and TakeOver, uh, Rich, what are you going to be doing uh, WrestleMania weekend? Like, what shows are you going to? What are some things that you uh, think are can't miss stuff? And what are some things that some of our listeners who are into pro wrestling should uh, check out, either on a streaming service or uh, what have you? Sure, and I want to give full props to... Uh, the fine folks at uh, Fight TV for giving me the ability to re- review and access some of the matches I wouldn't be able to because of time constraints. So I'm going to run through like each day, and then if you like it or anything stands out, I think there are going to be some titles that will probably be pretty weird, so I apologize in advance. <laughs> um, uh, so Thursday I fly. I get in there at 1 o'clock. I'm going right to my buddy's apartment. Props to Joe for housing me for the next – five days uh when i get there on thursday uh so we're gonna go to wxw world world uh, wild side extreme wrestling which is a german promotion that's where walter and the ring comp guys came from oh okay, so yeah mm-hmm. that's the show america is wunderbar and so that's gonna be a good mix okay. of like 
German and American wrestlers, and they basically do, uh, you know, almost a Japanese strong style European grappling, just a solid show. That's going to be, that's going to be at Laboom, which is one of my favorite places I hadn't been able to go to yet in New York, because it is a place they use for wrestling, but after seven, it's a dance club. So you have folks like leaving with like wrestling paraphernalia. And then you got some <laughs> local like Cubanos, black folk, Puerto Ricans rolled up in their best stuff, ready to cut a rug. And they're like those two ships passing in the night. That's cool. Yeah. And then uh, also Is that, that day. Is that bar wrestling? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've seen that. And then at the same exact time, I'm going to watch it when I get back to my buddy's house. It's going to be uh, Josh Barnett's blood sport which was last year Matt Riddle's blood sport, but, you know, he got that that glow up, that WWE cashola. <laughs> and so that set up, like, it's worked shoot fighting. So, like, ring arts, battle arts, uh, rings, things like that, where you, it's like Kumite. So they really treated it like you went to see, like, blood sport, only with its pro wrestlers, like, doing shoot. It was great. Like, you had, like, l- legit-looking flash knockouts, crazy looking submissions and so that's something i'm looking forward to catch on tape and then kind of doing like an overnight report on and then this is one of the first titles that you'll probably uh, be interested in isw interspecies wrestling presents excuse me bone hey, yeah go, interspecies, yeah. interspecies they, wrestling presents what? boner jams balls out for yes <laughs> what the hell is that god it, it is right a match, and I'm going to read off some of them. The reason I need to see this is because one of the matches is, uh, so you have stuff like uh, Chris Dickinson, who does evolve. He's going against Chris Brooks. That's fine. Tre- Team Tremendous, who I've never seen live, and I ne- I'm looking forward to seeing these guys. Uh, they're a wrestling tag team that pretend to be a buddy cop comedy. So, like, in the middle, their tag team moves would be, like, trying to interrogate you in the corner. <laughs> And they're going up against the Jim Nasty Boys, who is uh, two dudes who basically are a walk-in 80s like, comedy. I can't remember the one dude's name, but his tag partner is White Mike. <laughs> and I, I could not stop laughing when I saw one of their promos. So I was like, okay, I, I need to see this. Also of note in this match, uh, in this show, this is one of the 27 matches. I'm exaggerating. I think he really only has 11, but that's a lot. Sexy Eddie versus Swoggle. Swaggle oh, also Swaggle's this everywhere weekend. that weekend. I heard. Yeah, Swaggle's going to get the the uh, the Matt Riddle Award because Swaggle this weekend is wrestling Scott Steiner, nice. uh, and Nick Gage. <laughs> Hold up! Oh yeah, I did see yeah. him right. So he's going to do a uh, death match and then what? Wrestle Scott Steiner. I mean yeah. Scott Steiner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And the main event of this show is King of Crazy Championship. Fans bring the Legos death match. <laughs> I was like, that's that's some diabolical crap. And it's three dudes and a lady. Andy Starr, Matt Tremont, Jeff Cannonball, and Viking. And so, yeah, fans are bringing freaking... Uh, they're, bringing, they're bringing Legos, and you're going to get dropped on Legos. And as a father, Legos are like the devil's tool for just pain. pain and I, like... I could not imagine doing that. And then I'm closing with AIW and they're having slumber party massacre. And that is going to be one of the first, because you you have this dude wrestling at seven and slumber party massacre at 11 o'clock at night. It's going to be Scott Steiner versus Swoggle. (laughs) I have to see that match. Yeah. Yeah. For, and they said only time ever. I was like, you're darn right it's only time ever. This dude might not live to see the next day. Like, how? And then Friday, I'm jumping over and uh, watching Black Label Pro Adventures in Wrestling. Okay, That's yeah. going to have... Uh, Black Label's going to have... Um, uh, oh, my God. Adventures in... My brain stopped working. Give me one second. I'm looking up the uh, card. It's going to be... Uh, that's the English another one, right? No, Black Label is another local one. Oh, it is. Oh, no, that's the one. That's the one Brian Alvarez is wrestling on, right? Yes. Okay. He yeah. is going to be wrestling with Filthy Tom Lawler 
versus two mystery opponents. And this also will be the, me- the show in which Nick Gage faces Swoggle. So Swoggle will hopefully survive 11 o'clock Thursday night because 4 p.m. Friday afternoon, he's going to die at the hands of Nick Gage. Uh, eight, uh, 7 o'clock, I'm going to Battle Riot, which is MLW show, and that's going to be really exciting for me because it's a battle royal where you can win by throwing the dude over the top rope, pinfall, or submission. Dope. Okay, that's cool. And it's a Royal Rumble style. Every minute, a new person gets at. I heard that so MLW show has been pretty good. Have you watched? Have you been watching it? Yeah, I love it. I love okay. it. I think they're doing great work, and I hope they keep going. Okay, yeah, and then eight, eight o'clock, I will somehow try to figure out when I get back to my buddy's apartment which one I'm going to watch first: either Joey Janela's Spring Break Part One or Joey Ryan's Penis Party. <laughs> I just, I just love how they already sound like a fucking porno the whole time. Both Joey of, Ryan it. is <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen him, Devin, but he does he does this move called the dick flip, which is basically like <laughs> you grab his dick and his dick's like super like strong and it's like holding you and you can't get away from it. And then he like thrusts his hips and then it flips you. <laughs> I have to what what is this man's name? Because I am gonna look yeah, this Joey Ryan. Ryan. So, he used to have a tag team called the World's Cutest Tag Team with Candice LeRae, Johnny Gargano's wife, mm-hmm. and they legit were an outstanding team. Like one of their best matches were against the Young Bucks, where uh, Candice had a crimson mask like five minutes into the match. It's one of the most disturbing matches I think I've ever seen. Yeah, Candice LeRae was a wild one too before she got the dirty. Yeah, game. you, <laughs> man, she was not the one to mess with. No. So are you are you not going to uh, take over? Take well, takeover is Friday at the t- when it when I first bought these tickets, it was Saturday, and then they decided oh, they weren't going to go to Friday, on yeah. with the super card. Yeah, so I was like, well, shoot. But all things being equal, I will watch Takeover, but I'll watch it later that evening, and it'll probably be the first thing I watch because I don't want it spoiled, and I'm going to try to keep my phone in my pocket other than <laughs> taking pictures of Battle Riot. Because everybody's going to be like, oh, did you see blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, no. I'm going to have the Arthur the Arthur fist meme as like people were tweeting me. Yo, oh, man. Like, I'm going to be very deliberate. I'm going to put up uh, my uh, itinerary and let people know, don't at me if I'm not there. Because I'm trying Yo, to- I just seen this dude's finishing move. Are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> that is not a real thing. That's, that's okay. really right. Here's my counter for it, Devin. If that's not a real finisher, how is an Irish whip a real move? That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, Irish whip is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. So, no, the the work, like, my, my thing, my go-to of wrestling is the Canadian Destroyer. That move doesn't make any sense in physics. There's nothing about it that makes sense. I will be looking that up right now. Yeah. So what are you doing Saturday? Are you going to Saturday, ROH? Saturday, I'm going to go to ROH, wow. and then in the morning, I'm okay. going to be covering Access. So I'm going to okay. cover Access for the torch. I won't do video like we did with Cam because he got all the sexy equipment. I'm just going to be struggling. I'm going to go <laughs> interview some people. You know, see how they like it. One of my, my buddy Joe's going to go with me, so I'm going to do kind of like what I did with Cam in New Orleans, and like sit down with Joe after it's his first time going to access, get his opinion, see what he likes. Then we'll head back to his apartment, change or not change, but drop off my equipment and then go to Supercard. And that's supposed to go till midnight. So God help me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna and be then, a long show. And then that Hold also, is, that um, evening, Okada's, oh, is Okada ahead. wrestling on that? Yeah, he's in the main event versus uh, oh, yeah, Jay White. Versus Jay title. White. Yeah, that's right. And Jay Lethal is on there too, right? Jay Lisa is doing the ROH yeah. title against who? Matt Taven, Matt Taven and Marty yeah. Skrull in a ladder match. Okay. The Canadian Destroyer is just a fucking awesome move. I don't know how you do it, but. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Did you? I mean, but he did it. I cannot see it. He did it. So, I mean, it's better than the penis flip. I mean, uh, yes. I mean, it oh, listen, Devin, you if you think that. that's bad, uh, you got the penis flip. You got. I don't. I don't even want to get into uh, Homegirl from Evolve. And oh mom. yeah, <laughs> the tampon thing. 
<laughs> yeah, somebody somebody was wrestling, pulled the tampon out of their uh, hoo ha, and dropped oh. it down a wrestler's throat. Okay, and you know then that? super kicked him and spit blood into the air. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, Jim uh, Cornette lost his mind. <laughs> yeah. He you can just hear mind. the smoke from the <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so, have you seen Okada in person before? Yes, I saw him at Ring of Honor. Uh, I want to say it was Worlds Collide or one of those like global things they did in Philly for my 35th birthday. So, almost three years ago. Oh, wow. I'm jealous. I really want to see him in person. But it was wild because here's the thing, Brandon. I saw him and one of the, whoever, who else I saw was a boring face that nobody knew who wore some tassels and some other stuff. And everybody was just like, get him out of here, called Tetsuya Naito. Oh. Oh. Yeah, Naito. He's that was before he up. became Lowe's ungovernable. He, he, before he became the most ungovernable man in the world. And I also saw, saw this boots and trunks dude named Watanabe who became evil. Oh, okay. Now, because he was here on excursion, he was just here. Like I was like, they really wasted their time with this dude because I saw him in like maybe he was in maybe three matches in two years in the United States, and then boom, he, everything is evil. Now the two people I enjoy most, the two ma- people's matches I probably enjoy, just get a like this giddy joy out of watching and wrestling more than anybody is. Uh, Ishii and Suzuki. Have you seen them? Yeah. Last year. Last year, Ishii, I saw twice. And that was my goal when I was in New Orleans. I had to see Suzuki once. And so I knew he would be at one show. He was at the Bloodsport. Okay. And the Bloodsport. then he was a surprise guest tag partner at two other shows. Oh, wow. I and so, like, I could have died. When, like, And I got a picture with him. The only reason it hasn't replaced Tanahashi is because of my love of Tana. Devin, you have to see EC. This dude is like the be- he is the best brawler. I've heard he's, he's the best I've brawler you've ever seen. It's so it's so good watching him. Oh, is he is he in uh, Ring of Honor? What, 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 no, he's in New Japan. New Japan for okay. He's in New Japan, but he's everybody's like uncle that's just been tired of your crap <laughs> and isn't afraid to whoop you when your parents wouldn't. Yeah. He like he, whooping. like I swear, Ishii was like six three when he started wrestling and got pile driven to the point where he's five seven. Because this <laughs> dude walks to the ring like he's like Jesus, I got to do this again, and then he goes out and destroys you. Yeah, he just destroys people. It's so good. Uh, all right, let's get into uh, Russell. Well, actually, we're we're on. We actually yeah, let's get into WrestleMania. No, before that, let's do the NXT takeover really quick. Just the yes, big please. matches. Uh, so. Uh, which match? Let's do this differently. Which match are you most excited for? Come on, give me the Velveteen. I am. I am Velveteen, and you know Cam has his nephew Velveteen. For me, it's my cousin Matt Riddle, the King okay. of Bros. My bro, my bro. Like I cannot get enough. Like when Matt Riddle, like I think the last three or four WrestleManias I've been to. I've seen almost every one of his matches that weekend or that week because he would wrestle like 20 times and I'd see probably like 12 to 14 of them. And he just never gets tired. I think he's a phenom. And I think he's a dude where they have leaned into his best traits and not tried to change him. And so seeing him against Velveteen, who is basically a walk in cheat code, like Velveteen will wrestle whatever match you need. Texas death match. Got it. Japanese style match, got it. Mm-hmm. Just character on character, got it. So seeing him in Riddle, like it's going to be magical. All right, yeah, me too. Uh, what do you think about the Travis Bryant special, Pete Dunn versus Walter? I need. First of all, I wish Travis was coming so I could kick him in the shin because <laughs> I'm tired of my partner in crime uh, slandering Walter and slandering Pete Dunn, saying he's the Neutrogena special. Like, just because the man got a little acne don't mean he don't need to And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great match. I think Walter doesn't get a good rap with NXT UK. I mean, if you look at his match against Will Ospreay a couple of years ago, if you look at his match against uh, Jordan Devlin a few weeks ago, that was probably one of the best matches I've seen this year. And it was built as he is this unstoppable monster. 
and Devlin's trying to defend his home turf in Ireland and it will kill himself in order to do it. And the match opened with instead of it being like handshake or snatching a headlock, Devlin punched him in the face and then just punched him in the face again. <laughs> and he was like, I got, it was like, uh, I called it the Jack Shindo attack. If you remember Ultraman, like he's like, I got three minutes before this dude like gets pissed. So I'm going to try to knock him out. And then he winds up accidentally punching the ring post and like, you know, breaking his hand, quote unquote. And that leaves Walter the opening to just murder him in front of people for eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, I've it's seen good. Walter. I've seen Walter here and there, but I've heard people just talk, just gush about him. And I like him, but I'm I'm interested to see him on this big on this big stage. And I love Pete Dunne. That's my dude. So yeah. I can't wait for that. Uh, and then lastly, with NXT, who's who's leaving out NXT champion Johnny Gargano or Adam Cole? I think it's time for Cole. Okay. Because I think Undisputed Era has been talking big about. They're going to have all the gold in 19, and then this is a great start. I love, even though I know some people want like a ladder match or two out of uh, two out of three falls, like Triple H said, makes sense to me because you got to win twice. Right. It isn't just you snuck something and you got cute. You got to beat that dude twice, and I like it a lot. I agree. They used to do, by the way, for people who aren't wrestling fans for a long time, like back in the day, they used to do two out of three fall matches all the time. Right. Like, it's Rick not, Flair and Steamboat, goddamn. It's not as common yep. now, but they used to do it all the time just for that reason that Rich brought up. Uh, all right, let's move to the main card. Um, where I know I know where you fall on this because uh, I talk to you on Twitter and I listen to you all every week. But uh, where do you fall on Kurt Angle, his last match being against Baron Corbin? And how do you think that's going to go? Well, I fell in... At first, I was like, no, I'm with you. I was I was in the same boat. I wanted to be uh, like a Cena to kind of like have that perfect circle. But then what happened was I saw him wrestling these other guys on the road to the retirement match. Yeah. And I went from like Cam had, you know, I was like, every time I heard Cam say it, wherever he was saying it, I was like, nah, man, I, I can't. No, no. I believe like Kurt could do it. Kurt could do it. And then I was like, nah, Kurt can't do it. We got to, we got for his safety, let him hear that music, cut to the commercial and just pretend like he had a match. Like, we'll, we'll believe it. We'll believe it. It don't have to happen. Well, you know, you know what I think they're going to do? I think he's going to come out. He's going to come out. Baron Corbin's going to come out. He's going to German suplex, German suplex, angle slam, ankle lock, win in like 30 seconds. And people are going to celebrate and cheer. And then John Cena's music is going to hit. And he's going to come out and he says, you know, I can't have you have your last match be that. And then they're going to have a basic four-minute match. And he beats John Cena and he goes off in the sunset. That's what I think is going to happen. I'll take that. I'll take that all day. But I just don't want Kurt to try to have a five-star. Please no. Like Please no. Like, that time is gone. Like, this dude is a wrestling machine. And he doesn't need it. He doesn't deserve it. I made Devin watch every year. I watched Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle the week before WrestleMania because it's my favorite WrestleMania match of all time. It I was made, great. I made Devin watch that uh, last week when he was here, and it's it's never gets old. It's so good. Just Kurt Angle's intensity is second to none in the history of the business. It's just so good. Uh, and it's sad to see him where he's at, but it's time for him to move on. And he can have a role in the company. He can be an on-screen person, or he can show up from time to time to – you know, be like you know how Mick Foley after he stopped wrestling, he would show up to be a special guest referee or to give a pep talk yeah. to somebody. Yeah, Kurt can move into that role, but in the ring, it's it's time for him to hang it up. Um, all right, Triple H Batista, Triple H career on the line. What do you think is going to go on here? I think Triple H is going to lose. He's going to decide to be a family man and never be sitting. No, I'm just kidding. I think <laughs> I, mean, I think Batista is going to lose. I think he's going to lose with with like glee and he's going to be able to kind of like go out on his terms the way he wanted to as a wrestler. And for a dude at age 50, five zero look as good as he did mm -hmm. uh, a smooth half hour ago. I'm kind of like angry at life because I didn't yeah. give me like, Give me like twenty percent Batista. That's all I want, Lord. I, like I, I, I'm not asking for like hundred percent. Give me twenty. Rich, Rich, I'm telling myself. I was like, all I gotta do is buy a blazer and wear a tight V neck. That's all I gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my hair. I, I'm in there because that man looked good. Yo, that's real talk. Like, 
He like he slimmed down. He lost that weight. Man. Yeah, he's not like carrying this, all that unnecessary muscle. That shit's crazy. Um. All right. Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre. Roman's coming off a concussion in storyline. Drew McIntyre has just been a beast in the recent weeks. Uh, what do you think goes on here, Rich? I think Roman wins, but I think Drew gets some measure of revenge because I think he's a dude that they they see money in, and they should. Mm-hmm. Damn right. And I, I just think, you know, I think I think he's awesome. But I think Roman coming back, he's fighting for cancer and fighting for his family and, you know, well, fighting against cancer. He's not he's not pro cancer, to be clear. <laughs> yeah, who's pro cancer? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> that was on a TV show. I forget what TV show that was. Where somebody was like, How are you pro cancer? It was one of it was a funny bit. But yeah. Um Okay. Uh all right. Before we get into this match, who's gonna win? Okay. Oh, good. Well, okay, what do you think about? I want Buddy Murphy, the Buddy Murphy match. Do you think he's going to keep the cruiserweight belt? Yeah, I think Tony Nice is a pretty boy, and he, I mean, Buddy Murphy basically like going back to what we were talking about with New Japan. Buddy Mur- you can tell Buddy Murphy watches New Japan and mm-hmm. like wrestling outside of WWE because mm-hmm. a lot of his finishing sequences are from like the best matches that week. And that's right. not an insult. That is the fact that he could physically do that. Yeah, and Buddy I think one like all, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a jokes over facts in Twitter, but I will definitely throw the joke of since he's like, you know, in a relationship with Alexa Bliss, he going to make sure he stay on that main roster and make sure he keeps his eye <laughs> on those fools on the main roster. And I'll leave it at that. And he's That's also right. not 205. There's no way. He's 265, but they just keep <laughs> like, they, they move like that little counterweight to the left. It's kind of like a, if you remember watching um, uh, uh, Dodgeball, when they were talking about, like, they were talking to him, and he's like, yeah, add five pounds to the scales and go home. I was like, that's what they do with him, only taking it away. Like, he starts out at negative 60. That dude, man, he is ripped. There's no, no way, way he's 205. Two, two five. Um, okay. All right, before we get to who's going to win this match, um, we're going to have Cam and Travis on next week, and they've been talking oh, nice. about this a lot. But uh, what what are your thoughts on the Kofi Kingston storyline, how they got nice. to this point? And then after that, uh, what do you see happening on Sunday? I think, well, one, uh, for me, and I've been, you know, kind of trying to push this in a way that didn't, like, get too angry because I don't want to be the angry black man ever with any of these arguments. Uh, I think, Kofi, you didn't need to go to the racial stuff, but the second you did, you can't go halfway with it. Right. You can't. Mm -hmm. Be saying, you know, like Daniel Bryan's the smartest person in the bunch because he has he has the innate intelligence to understand where Vince was going with it and is smart enough to remove himself entirely. Like at no point did he say any of that stuff. It's always Vince saying it and Daniel like just leaving or then just arriving. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you're going to say that, like people like us have never gotten that shot. I know Bruce talks a lot about, well, it's it's the the titles don't mean it as much as. Um, the money and the placement. But for me, if even if you're saying this is a business where the titles don't mean as much, it's a prop, the fact that it's a primarily white face you give that prop to means more to me than the fact you don't think those titles mean anything. Facts. Right. And like for me, and to, and to Bruce, and I love Bruce, but Bruce is yeah. talking about from a business perspective. But to the right. fans, the fans... The titles do mean stuff. Man, too. It matters matter to me. It matters to me. Definitely. And especially, uh, and I know Rich brought this up a lot with kids. His son, like with yeah. Trey, sees that he sees somebody that looks like him being the champion. And so when you go year after year after year after year, and there's only one face who wins that championship, then it, it, it does have a subliminal meaning. Even if, even if, and this isn't true either, but even if, like, oh, the highest paid people on the roster were the black people, right? Well, that's good. But that's not the case either. But even if that were the case, that's fine. But what are you presenting to the public? Right. And so you can you can do and that's and that could be even worse in some ways because it's like the people who say, Well, I support you, but I can't put you out in front. Like, well, no, right. you can we need to be out in front because how are we gonna get other people to come up and be like me if we're not out in front? Um and then I, I, I had a thread about this, but it was basically this idea that and I know Cam talked about this, about why Kofi's an underdog. But the thing right. with me has always been with this storyline is 
it, I have uh, some people have no like don't want, well claim they don't want like you know Jim Ross was like I don't want race in um, my wrestling. wrestling or something like yeah. that and I was well Jim like you worked in Mid South wrestling what are you talking about but um, <laughs> but I don't have no problem with race being a storyline like race is a race and racism is real. And it is, it is, it can be functionally told in story. We see it in movies, we see it in novels, we see it in television. Like race is, is something that can be used in a storytelling aspect. The, and it's not even that I don't trust WWE, which I don't. But it's not even that. It's the fact that it's too close to reality for me to be able to separate it from reality. In the Correct. sense that Vince is on TV saying subliminal messages like well you're just not good enough we didn't see you that way those types of things while in real life it's entirely plausible that you believe that Vince was saying I don't see Kofi that way he's just not good enough for both being for the same reason and so when you blur those lines in that way it's hard for me to ignore those things you know what I mean I but, have no idea what you mean no you don't know <laughs> Mike of course not but I'm then Kofi, but but on the other side of that, seeing how the fans rallied around Kofi, that moment with the Usos, which we don't get yes. wrestling too often. Like here's the thing with WWE: sometimes they mess things up so much, and then they accidentally stumble into something great. And that moment in that Gauntlet match with the Usos, when they were like, and they and they actually paid attention to their history, and was like, "No, nah, bro, we're not going through this. Like, no, and we forfeit, so you can move on." Like that. That's a that's a, one of the best moments I've seen in wrestling in a long time, and so that getting me us to here, I'm not ignoring what happened. I'm not saying it's okay. Yeah. But we're here now, and so now that we're here, what do you think happens on Sunday? I think for the from for my own personal sake, I'll be greedy. I need Kofi to win. Mm -hmm. Oh, without because, question. Yeah, shoot. Uh, I just feel like it has to happen because. I can't. I, my pressure ain't good. I ain't built like this. Like, I'm, I can't see nobody go through as much as Kofi went through these last couple of weeks. I've been watching, and then see him do so great in Elimination Chamber, and then this happens, and it's like, what was it for? Like, like I'll be, I'll be tainted. I will be tainted if he doesn't win. I watched the Elimination. Oh, go ahead, Rich. No, I'm gonna. I, I, and Brandon can speak to this. Like two weeks ago, when I did the deep dive. That was probably one of the hardest ones I've ever had to do mm -hmm. because here in Pittsburgh, we had an officer involved shooting and the officer that was involved in the shooting got off. So like WWE television at that time, I, I did not want to think about it because even fathoming the idea that one, Kofi was going to not win or two, he was going to lose at the hands of his brothers, the New Day being jealous, like so Ooh. many white wrestling fans were selling that as like, oh, that'd be great heat. That'd be great. I was like, mm -mm. Don't, dude, I don't, I can't talk to no, you right now. You're no. right. You're right. Thank you. I watched I, yeah. Elimination Chamber and for the first time in, I can't remember how long, I was a fan. Like I was literally yeah. going, like jumping out of my seat for near yeah. falls. Like I and can't ball. remember the last time that like I fell for near falls and I was popping for near falls. Like, and at the end, because at that time, they hadn't fumbled the whole story yet. Like, everything went downhill at that press conference and from that moment yeah. on. But before then, I was like, oh, like this, like, oh, they told a great story with Kofi. Like, I'm cool with that. And and the fans got behind them, so maybe they'll go somewhere with this. And then they did that press conference, and then from that point, it just went downhill. But, yeah, I, I hope Kofi wins uh, as well. Um, Universal Championship, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. What you got? What are you expecting to see in that match? See, I'm. I told uh, when I was talking to Travis at the end of the show this week. I mentioned this one. This is the match I think can go either way because I don't think it's in Vince's nature to give us all happiness. <laughs> and so, if I'm you have Becky, it. Kofi, between Becky, Kofi, and Seth, no disrespect to Seth, but if somebody got to take the bullet, bro, it's got to be Seth. All day. Gotta be oh, Seth. Yeah, day. it's got to be Seth. <laughs> People will lose their – yeah, speaking of that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good analysis on that. Speaking of that, where are you in regards to, at this point, I know where you've been, but 
everybody doesn't listen as much as I. They should. You all should go listen to the PW Torch and the Deep Dive and the East Coast Cast, but they everyone doesn't. But where are you at this point on the three way with Rhonda, Becky, and Charlotte? Are you still wishing it was Becky versus Rhonda, or have you just kind of, you know, uh, well, it is what it is. Let's make the best of it. Well, I'm in. I was. It is what it is. Let's make the best of it. And then they took the title off of Oscar, and then they <laughs> no. had the announcement today. <laughs> that it's winner take all so whoever wins is going to have both, both women's championships and so i'm definitely feeling some kind of way about it because it's like dog y'all could have to do that shit yeah right and people will lose their mind if charlotte wins by the way the funniest thing about this and this is me being uh snarky towards snarky wrestling fans is you know how many wrestling f- on twitter tw- on twitter and on social media are like Oh, WWE, all they do is they care about Charlotte. Charlotte's their golden goose. They don't care about Becky. And I'm and I'm watching this, and I and I listen to Bruce Mitchell say this, and he articulated it a little bit better than me. But I'm watching this, and I'm like, Charlotte, I mean, Becky is clearly the one that they're pushing. Like, right. Becky has gotten the most TV time in the last three months than anybody, male or female, on the show. Like, they're clearly doing everything for her to win this. And if Becky shows up and she wins both belts, like, are people going to say, oh, they're shoving Becky down our throat? No. Like, they're not going to say no. that. No. <laughs> no, that's not And then happen. also consider this. We have um, – I'm looking at the calendar right now. I just want to bring to everyone's attention. Whoever wins, and I'm assuming Becky, and whoever – Becky wins, right? That's April 7th, MetLife. You know what the next pay-per-view is, right? That, I May. mean, um, it's um, um, Extreme Rules, right? No, no, there's one in between. Oh, really? What is it? Money in the Bank. They moved Money in the Bank up to May? Yes, sir. Oh. So even if Becky wins both belts, somebody can win and cash in and take one. Oh, man. Oh, I didn't know they moved that up to May. Yes, wow. sir. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm with that. I, I got a question. So uh, Ricochet and Aleister Black are... Uh, are champions in the NXT right now? Tag team champions? No, they're, no, no, they're going for the, for the tag, tag team championship, championship on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, they're going for it. Okay. And I think they're going to go for the Raw championship on Sunday. Oh, no. They just no, did it tonight, they just, and tonight. they just lost by count out they because lost. the Revival were scamps. Oh, uh, they did it tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, they got them by count out because one of them was hiding under the ring and held Ricochet. Okay, cool. So that is WrestleMania weekend. Rich, thank you for going through that with us. Uh, make sure y'all check out some of those independent shows support independent wrestling like it's very important to do so if you find a good promotion that's run properly go support them like it's, it's it really helps the business out a lot um all right let's let's do something where we can get mike back in because he's been on silent because he's the only non-wrestling fan on here mike are you here uh, now he's mike? now he's on I'm mute. Here, I'm here. oh yeah yeah oh, mike. okay good i thought okay. we we're gonna have like a uh uh, uh, we're gonna have to have a special podcast in memoriam of Mike. Like we lost him <laughs> the great wrestling conversation of 2019. Mike, uh, tell us. Guys. Although I, I am running out of time, but that's okay. I'm gonna. Do I thought you said track. it got canceled. Yeah, it, it. Well, like 20 minutes ago, it got uncanceled. All right. Well, let me get your opinion on this, Mike. Tell us what you're reading. Like, tell us your pull list. What you've been reading the last couple weeks. I, I haven't picked up my batch. I'm a little behind on my comics, but I caught up on Doom Patrol, and I, I did want to, I like... I okay, yeah, wanna, go ahead. I am pleasantly surprised mm-hmm. with the direction that they have taken in the last few episodes. I don't know who's caught up or who's watching, but... Where, where, where I, am, caught up? I love Doom Patrol. I love it, yes. Oh, as, what, you're watching? As someone, that's great, you know, because as someone who reads a lot of comics, it is always refreshing to see a Guardian or a Doom Patrol or a something that I have just never even come across before mm-hmm. in comics. And I read a lot of, I mean, Brandon thinks I only read Batman, but I read other comics and, and I read big, I, I participate in as many of the, or participate, I mean, you know, I read as many of the big comic events as I possibly can, and I never come across some of these things. And this is great. Um... Brandon, are you caught up? Devin, got, yeah. Brandon, we are caught up, sir. Rich, are you all Watch caught up? Show. Oh, Rich is on me. He's talking to someone. So, yeah. Uh, Mike, did you see the last episode? I did. And, you know, I think it is it is fantastic. Like, 
these they've done such a good job of like doing the whole like like these are not they don't consider themselves heroes they are very much on the self-loathing path and <laughs> one of them each one of them considers themselves to be a monster both in their non-super form and in their super form like each one of them like like negative man he does not like the way he treated his wife and his lover uh, in, before an accident that makes him a monster in his eye. Now, no, it makes you know, him a monster because he still he's the, still is the same monster. Like he's ashamed to own his gayness. Well, yeah, <laughs> and like, but but also his power is he has this physical monster inside of him that that is attacking him because he is treating himself like in this self loving way. You got Robot Man who wishes he was a better husband and father, who wishes he could. You know, take that back, and then on the outside, you know that that's what that's what he used to be before his accident, and then now he's this like cold, calculating. Well, not calculating. He's just cold, like he doesn't, he can't feel anything, and that torture, like I don't know, I like, I, you know, you got Rita who was a kind of a huge bitch before, and then now she she feels like she looks like a monster. I just think they're doing it. I mean, you know, it's pretty obvious. I don't think Rita was a bitch, but I mean. No, she, well, I she think, was. Well, I'm not saying she was a bitch, but no, I'm she saying was. she, she called herself that. She was a horrible person to people. <laughs> she was a horrible. What are you talking about? She, <laughs> she was a horrible. Was person. Horrible. She was a huge bitch. But also, I, I think it's really great how they're showing how they this duality, like where before each of their accidents and after, they both they all view themselves as like monsters. When in reality, they could be so much more if they just you know learn to work together. Jane is by far my favorite character. I love. Oh, Jane. without question. Thing. She's definitely the most interesting. Um, I wish to be more cooperative. I think because she's not cooperative, that's why I like her so much because she's always like that. Like I have no idea what she, she could turn into one of her sixty-four or whatever personalities, and I would never, you know, I'd have no idea what to expect. So I, I'm giving Doom Patrol a, a solid, fresh rating from the the, the Mike and Sue. Hey, you just left out Cyborg like he's not the best. Like goddamn, Cyborg's awesome. No. Bro. I love Cyborg. I, I didn't want to get into all of them, but Cyborg, you know, I love Cyborg. I actually, you know, since since the last time I complained about him, I I like him a lot more. He sees himself as, a, you know, I prefer the other origin story, but he sees himself as a monster because of, like, his mom dying in the accident. And then he sees him, like, he, like you know, with the whole most recent episode with his dating profile, like, that girl didn't want to talk to him. One person who wasn't interested in Cyborg, and then she kind of looked at him like, he's a monster. Or, you know, like... That and episode then like, was so emotional to me. Like, I had no business being this emotionally involved in these characters. But <laughs> y'all talk about all these other characters. The most emotional, the most tragic character on that show is Cliff Steele, Robot Man. Well, yeah. That is, oh, a, that. That is a tragic, that is about a tragic story you can get. It would be Cyborg, but he has all the, the luxury of the fame and fortune of, of being one of the, like, justice leakers. So, like, I feel like that takes away from the pain. He gets that spotlight, but I don't know. I feel like once we know more about Jane's character, she's gonna be the one. No, I don't feel sorry for that bitch ever. But um, now, now wait a minute, Mike. What about um? What about the one thing with like Cyborg's dad? Like I was talking about this a little on Twitter. Cyborg's dad is basically like Tiger Woods' dad. Yes, where, like, yes he, is. he didn't care about football. But he is like that dad who wants to make sure you go D one with Justice League. Like, hey, Flash ain't gonna get stopped by this dude. Batman gonna stop a dude in eighteen seconds. You did it in thirty seven. I, I I don't know what your thoughts are on the whole Vic and Silas relationship. I said this the last time we talked about Doom Patrol, but I do not like Silas Stone. It's like this version of Silas Stone in in this show. I think, yeah. like, I don't know. I don't like him being like. Like, well, Silas Stone has always been like the cold Silas. father. He's always been like the father that's kind of cold to him and because he sees his son as an experiment. But in here, they kind of made him seem nefarious in a way, but I don't right. think he was nefarious. And they kind of they kind of had Cliff Steele play to that, and that's why he took the privacy mode on and all that stuff. Um, so, Rich, what do you – how did you – that last episode – that scene yeah. where Robot Man had the breakdown, that was like, I didn't think I could get that emotionally involved in a character, or, or especially Doom Patrol. That scene was really but hard for me. Yeah. Like, he cannot feel anything. He can't feel rage. And so I could totally see how his brain just overloaded. Like, imagine if, if you were upset 
or you were angry or you were happy and you just had no way of expressing it. You couldn't do it. Like your brain would like just spaz out and freak out. I mean, it, to me, it makes perfect sense. And I thought it was awesome. I mean, I know you asked for it. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm with my, the thing for me, like even when you add in the story of the, the uh, mouse that's like swearing revenge and it goes full <laughs> Doom Patrol. Yeah, full Doom like, Patrol. <laughs> it is like, I was overcome with the sadness of him just, like he was eating the sandwich and he couldn't, like he couldn't get her to understand I need to eat the sandwich because I'm hungry and how is it that I'm the only person that tries to have your back and you don't understand I need your, you need my, you need to have my back right now with this. And that was wild to me because Cliff needed somebody. And then when she went for the throat and set him off, it was like, you know, you, this is why your daughter is never going to love. It's like, not nah, that is not what he needed. So I would, I love it. And the fact that of all these characters, the two that get to me the most, are him and, and no no and uh uh, uh negative not negative man negative uh, man you're right negative man yeah negative negative man. Man. That's right. you you can't see their characters mm-hmm. you can't see them like right. those are two outstanding actors and you just hear their voice and you have the pain mm-hmm. and somehow yeah, Cliff still fucking... somehow Robot Man's face doesn't change but I feel like I see emotion like it's yes. weird. Yes. Like, I feel like That's I see his emotion. He's good with his arms. Like, I swear, it's all in his... Like, he can't even move his shoulders, but his... Like, I feel like that actor can express his emotion just by the way his arms and, and legs and That's body Brendan are. That's Brendan Fraser, dog. Brendan Fraser. Like, we Brendan didn't think Fraser. Brendan Fraser had that in him. We never thought Brendan Fraser had that in him. Also, he is. by the way, I thought what Cliff said to... I thought what Jane said to Cliff was way more hurtful than what yes. Cliff said to Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I'm like, okay, hold on. I love Jane, but you have no right to be mad about that after what you just said. Like, this is his, this is integral to his character. This is why he's so upset. This is why he's having all these problems. And and you're going to, and you know, you have 64 personalities that you, you're the only one that has kind of your shit under control. I mean, not really, but you respect your, whatever you call them enough to just like not have to have, you like, She's crazy, but she doesn't have as many. I feel like she's more controlled than the rest of them do. The rest of them are struggling to find out who they are. Jane doesn't. But look, care. she wasn't even supposed to be there. She was supposed to be play, play the fucking happy, see her own place with the other people from Doom Patrol. Like, so she's dealing with that too. You know, like that's real shit. Like, yeah. like what's wrong? with she wants to know yeah, what's, the like, bigger version. What's wrong with me? Why? Why wasn't I able to stay here? If I was in that situation, I feel like. You should, you know, I'm being manipulated. I want to talk to the to Nigel before I, I start getting all mad about it because it's just not going to help the situation. Honestly, yeah. this along with them adding twenty thousand comics this month to the app, so we can actually get a backlog, is what they should have kicked this platform off with. Uh, I said yes. on Twitter the other week that they, what they should have done was. Doom Patrol be their initial release. No, Young Justice be their initial release because everyone right. loves Young Justice. And so we bring people it. in that. You should have had the 20,000 comics already on there because three, four years ago when they did Convergence, that was when they were moving from East Coast to the West Coast and they were converting their library over to digital. So they had all these comic books in digital. So they could have put it on there to start. So you We should- always knew they were going to move their library over. I just, I, I mean, you were... I just thought it took it was going to take time because no, they, they already had it. It should have been at the release, or you shouldn't have released it until it was ready. And you should have released it with young. Do you think they rushed this? And you, and I know that they yes. did because they are yeah. they have planned like the only way their, their plan for keeping their subscribers is as soon as one show ends, another one comes back. That's fine, you but they I mean? rushed it because they should have had the comics on there, and they should not have led with Titans. They should. I know well, some I people like, like Titans. Titans. Titans was trash. Didn't mind it until the end. I, I see the problem with the end, but so far. So, I'm like, Mike, hold up, Mike. You're watching Doom Patrol, and you don't see the problem with Titans. No, I see the. I'm saying I see the problem with Titans. I I hope Doom Patrol doesn't suffer the same fate. It has, it's clearly gotcha. has it. At no, at no, there's no character on Titans that I related to, that I got emotionally invested on. The closest was Raven, and they did a piss poor job with that. A really bad they, job. They do a bad job with Raven. 
and I'm partly biased because Dick Grace is my favorite hero of all time, and they completely well, he was he was way off. They turned him into Tim Todd Grayson. <laughs> Tim Todd Grayson, yes, that's exactly what. Now nah, he's Jason. See, he would have been a perfect Jason. No, he was not game. Jason. He was not Jason. He was. He, wanted, uh, he acted like he was. No, he acted like Red Hood Jason, partly, and then they made him a detective. And then I don't know what that character was. It wasn't. It wasn't Dick Grayson. I can tell you that it wasn't Dick Grayson. True. All uh, right. Unfortunately, I kind of have to hop off right now. All start. right. Mike. Oh, Mike. I'm sorry. Next I time know, I won't I do know, so I'm much sorry. wrestling. And I, I, know, I know you. That's the thing, though. Rick. I can't take that away from you guys. Can't take that. <laughs> I, I may not have what you guys do, but I'm not going to stop you. All right, um, Mike. You'll be back next week. As much as I want to talk about the rest of this stuff with you, and believe me, I do. I have to jump off. I'm so sorry. All right, Mike. It's okay. Have fun. Enjoy the rest without me. Okay. Bye, Mike. All right. So uh, before we get into the rest of this news, uh, let's get into our week on Twitter segment. Uh, Rich, you saw us. What'd you think? I loved it. I I saw it twice. Good I, for you. I, thought, uh, I, I actually, well, I enjoyed it so much that I watched today while I was at work. I'm still at work while we do this. I watched both episodes of The Twilight Zone. Just to keep my peel love going. How was and that? Because I'm about to subscribe listen, this week. When my dog shows up every time and he starts talking like someone's whole life didn't just dissolve <laughs> in the background, I was like, "Come on, peel, come on, <laughs> man!" Like you at least got to acknowledge that dude like hanging on by a thread. Like, can we? Can we just? It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. so awesome, yo. Now, what'd you think about how all these think pieces came out? About like, oh, this movie's this is about this, this is about that. When I watched that film, and I thought it was a pretty straightforward plot. I thought it was about the haves and the half nots, and about living yep. life in privilege, and that if you change places with someone in privilege, and you came from somewhere with not privilege, that you, it's more than likely that you can live that same life, if not a better life. Like to me, that's what it seemed like. And people are going super in depth to things that like I don't think was there. Uh, but did you kind of notice that in the reaction to the film? I did. And one of the things I took away from it and I didn't, I don't think I threw it on Twitter, even though I would have, because I'm fairly open about this. I've mentioned it seven times, several times, not seven times. Uh, my family was homeless for a time. And so I identified a lot of the red and Adelaide stuff because I could imagine the me that was homeless in a hotel in like section eight housing Mm -hmm. and homeless. And then in a shelter and then in section eight housing, meeting the me that's a homeowner, college educated with a wife and a son and a retirement, like saying, like, who's this scumbag and how do I take his life? Wow. That's, mm-hmm. yo, that's perspective. I appreciate that shit. That's real. That is real. And I think, I, like, I had some of my friends because they know I, like, review movies and stuff. Um, yeah. Were asking me, like, you know, what'd you think about, like, I didn't get the film. Explain it to me. And then they keep asking these questions and questions. And then at some point they're like, I don't know why it couldn't be simple. And I was like, well, it was simple. You're making right. it this. I was like, so many people wanted this film to be more than what it was, and so they don't trust their eyes. So they go and watch this film, and they think that they're missing something. When in reality, you're probably not missing anything. You probably get everything, but your mind is telling you that you're missing something. Like I'm missing something. There's something more to this. There's a secret meaning. Because there's this. a scary movie in the background, and you feel like no, the scary <laughs> movie's not in the background. The scary movie is in the foreground. Forefront. Okay, in this yeah. film. This is a scary movie with a simple plot throughout, with a simple meaning. It's not all these intricate double entendres and different meanings. It's very he he said in, in in interviews, "I just wanted to do a horror film." That's what it was. But people get well. What did this mean? What did that mean? What did this mean? And I'm like, well, it probably meant what it was like. And and even with Get Out, when Get Out had a little bit more meanings, but people wanted this film to be Get Out. But even in Get Out. Like, I remember Jordan Peele during the, I said this on our review, but I remember Jordan Peele during the interview, and he was talking about the Fruit Loop scene, and how everybody was like, oh, that's so, that's so clever with this racism thing. She don't even want to color Fruit Loops with the milk. And Jordan Peele was like, um, I didn't really think about racism with that scene. I just thought it'd be creepy to separate the Fruit Loops from the milk. <laughs> and right. but people went on these, writing articles about that one scene, when the dude who made the scene wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> like, wasn't even thinking about it in the slightest. Uh, so, yeah, that's been interesting to see the reaction of that post uh, that film coming out. 
Uh, but I'm glad it's doing well. It's the biggest opening for a black woman-led film ever. Uh, it's the biggest uh, film by a black director in an original screenplay uh, so far. So, yeah, good. I'm happy. Uh, a little bit of politics. Uh, the Mueller report came out, and I was uh, trying to tell it was people. Re- it was released to the to Barr. Well, yeah, he yeah. completed his <laughs> Mueller report, and Barr did a summary. And I was telling people, like, this is not going to be what you think it's going to be. Like, I was trying to prepare right. people. This is not going to be what you think it's going to be. And and it may be more than what we know. And in fact, I'm willing to bet it's more than what we know because I doubt somebody writes 400 pages that can be summarized in a page. Listen, I went I went to undergrad school and I have a master's degree. I cannot summarize 400 pages in a year's worth of work in one. To four page. pages, no, not four pages. It's four pages. That just seems like a lot. But that neither here nor there. Um, where do you think the Democrats should go from? How do you think they should play this? Which because I'm in the I'm in the camp that. They shouldn't. They don't need to Benghazi this. That'll be the worst thing they can do <laughs> politically, is to just keep hitting the same thing overhead. If they're going to investigate Trump, they need to diversify what they're looking into, so it can't come across as the same thing. But they already are, though. Well, yeah. I think, you know, and the thing for me is, it's not necessarily like I see what you're saying about Benghazi, but in one case, and that that becomes the the argument that kind of like gets me the most. It's like. Both of them are investigations, but, but one the is same. something they yeah. did like, yeah. 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 And so with Mueller, I think it's clear, and I think it was clear with him because the way he did things, uh, and then thinking about my old job, the way I thought about how things would have been done there, um, you have, uh, what's I'm trying to think of the right way to put this, uh, you have uh, a guy who put out a 400-page document, 300-page document. But then on top of that, he also said, I'm going to give a bunch of this to like local uh, prosecutors Mm -hmm. because this is going to be your dance because I don't trust these fools. Yep. Yeah. I think he gave all the good stuff to uh, uh, SDNY. Yep. And that's where we're going to see what comes out of that. And when I said Benghazi, I wasn't trying to say it was the same because I know how ridiculous Republicans are. Oh, no, Brandon. No, 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 no. I don't want... Oh, I yeah. wasn't trying to do a few no, for the folks that listen. Like, what I, but I'm just saying for even people listen. What I meant was the public is stupid, and so yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the public is going to look at this and say, "Well, you're just investigating Trump over and over with the same thing, and you complained about that with Hillary Clinton." And I'm like, "Well, it's not, it's not, it's not the same." But that is how it's going to be played, even by so-called not like the the craziest thing about this media is that it's not. I don't even get mad at Fox News anymore. Like I do because so many people watch it, but I don't. It's when I watch see it if I when I ever do turn on CNN or I see articles in the New York Times or the Washington Post, and they and they play stupid. And I'm like, y'all are smarter than this. Y'all aren't purposely being stupid. Like Fox News is purposely doing these things. Y'all are doing these things because you think it's the right thing to do, and it's and it makes things much, 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 much worse. Uh, in a side, in a side political note, uh, I heard Rich and Travis talking about. Uh, you guys were talking. This is so funny. So on the VIP after show, the PW Choice, go VIP by the way. It's great, great content. Thank you. Um, but I was listening to the VIP after show, and Travis and Rich were talking about like uh, touchy feely Joe Biden, and Travis was <laughs> like, and Travis was like, just wait. Until he announces and all these stories come out about Joe Biden being a creep and breathing down your neck and touching him and kissing on your cheeks. And literally fucking two weeks later. We Travis this, knew. It, Travis be knowing. Story. But I mean, we all knew, though. We all but we, knew. I mean, we all heard the stories, but it's so funny. Y'all were just talking about this. And I was like, yeah, like, Joe needs to, not, needs to sit this one out. He's not equipped for this primary. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Because we always had... Joe, like when we see when watching MSNBC and watching Joe meet whoever in these big uh, like photo ops, Joe is doing creepy shit, yo. <laughs> like if you look at Joe's eyes, Joe is doing some creepy shit, and Joe always hugging these pretty young white girls a little too tight. Like, yeah. and, and, jo- and Joe, Joe, here's the thing with Joe: Joe would have been fine in most of our eyes, like the collective us Democrats, left oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. people. Coming off the Obama presidency, he was Uncle Joe. Everybody done forgot about Anita Hill. They shouldn't have. But they yep. forgot about Anita Hill. They done forgot about the crime bill. They done forgot about him getting his 
ass whipped in the primary. A lot of people don't. Like people forget this. He ran for president multiple times. Never got one percent. Never got more than one percent of the vote. Got whipped in primaries. People forgot about all that. He was vice president Joe. The dude who said he'll punch Trump in the face if he saw him on the streets. Like he had all the goodwill. He should have just rode that into the sunset. Been somebody that weighs in, says says a couple words that are good, and supports the Democratic candidates, and he'd have been straight. But shows up for the blue collar states to get get, get Pennsylvania and shit. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, one. yeah. Send him there. Send him Ohio, Wisconsin. Let him do that, right? But then when the rumors start talking about Joe's going to run for president, Joe's think, just, just, they was thinking about Stacey Abrams. I'm like Joe. First, you're not going to win. First of all, and then secondly. You're going to ruin yourself because all people are going to do is look into you and they're going to bring back up Anita Hill. They're going to bring back up the crime bill. They're going to bring back up all the stuff you said about the white working class. They're going to bring up you being creepy and it's going to ruin your reputation. Sit this one up. Sidebar, what y'all think about Stacey Abrams? Like, she ain't really held no elective office yet, has she? Am I... I no, well, that was because of the shenanigans well, yeah. in yeah. Georgia. Yeah, that, I mean, she and had that I, think, I don't like the fact that he didn't even consult her. No. And folks were, you know, throwing out there that she would be his running mate. And it's like, eh. Why would she do that? If Stacey Abrams right. ran in the primary one-on-one with Joe, B- Joe Biden right now, Stacey Abrams would win. And it wouldn't even be close. It right. wouldn't even be close in the Democratic primary. The, the, how liberal the Democratic uh, the Democratic base is at this point, it it wouldn't even be close. So why would Stacey Abrams take a back seat to Joe Biden, especially when Stacey Abrams probably Stacey Abrams probably knows Joe ain't gonna win. So why would I jump on board <laughs> right. with somebody I know is gonna lose? Like that was all bad. That was all bad. Um, and- yeah, she went full Talia Shire and Rocky too. You can't win. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, the last thing before we get into the movie and TV and nerd news is uh, NCAA tournament is in the final four now. And yes, no blue bloods, baby. It's been brought back to the forefront of this idea of not paying college athletes. You've seen, seen a lot of articles over recently. I just saw one today that talked about, uh, I mean, yesterday that talked about um, Tony Bennett at uh, Virginia. Virginia. Got a two hundred fifty thousand dollar bonus for making the Elite Eight, and he got another five hundred thousand dollar bonus for making a Final Four, and the players get nothing. So, Rich, do you think? My question to you about this is: Do you think the public opinion is actually turning for the good on this, or do you think that it's just the circles that we roll in on Twitter, and the masses still think they should keep these kids broke? I think you still are always going to have corporate cape in Twitter that's going to be like, these kids are doing it the right way, not like these guys in the NBA. <laughs> you're keeping it guy. you're keeping it honest. You're keeping it real. Doing all it for the love of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, homeboy about getting Calipari about to get a contract for life. For NWO. life. Throw that NWO. <laughs> oh, man. Like, they're like, what if he's a bad coach? For, for, for life. For life. Like... <laughs> He gonna have X Pac showing up. He gonna have Eric Bischoff. Bro, UCLA him offered him Bluetooth. seventy million dollars, and Kentucky was like, "Oh no, we got this." Let me tell you how much money we can give you. And by the way, I don't blame Cal because Calipari is actually pro paying athletes. You know the funniest thing? Yeah. Calipari and Nick Saban have both said they're pro paying athletes. Steve Spurrier brought a proposal to SEC Media Day. That they should take ten percent of the SEC coaches' salaries and put that in the pot to pay the players. Think about that. Steve Spurrier did that. Spurrier, yeah. And but people are just like, but people are okay with these dudes getting paid this much, knowing the blatant hypocrisy. It's so frustrating sometimes when you see it. And then like, like I, I did a joke today and on Twitter, and I was like, uh, if I'm Zion, uh, I drop out of school today after Duke loses. <laughs> Damn right. Like I, I'm not going back to class for what? For what? I don't need some. I don't need some idiot on a scooter blowing my knee out. Yeah, for <laughs> what? Like I'm cleaning my dorm out and I'm signing with an agent who's going to front me some money so I can get ready Workout. and prepare, prepare yeah. for this damn draft. 
so I can go be the number one pick and get rich. I'm not going to. But this, this motherfucker say he, he's, he's strongly considering coming back for a second year. No, he's not. He's lying. No, he's that, not. That, that, bless that, his heart. That's just bless what you heart. have to say. This is what they tell you yeah. to say, so he won't be the best. See, Zion, the interesting thing with Zion is America likes Zion. Like, yes. It's interesting. Like, they like that dude. Like, they, because he, he's, they, he's a big, strong fucking beast, but he's got a baby face. He's still like you can tell right. he's an eighteen year old. Like he's got a baby face. And America he's soft spoken and America likes that dude. So And nobody liked Duke until until just now. Yeah, like shit's crazy. Yeah. He made Duke likable. So he's playing that role. He's playing the baby face. And so and that's what the baby face is. It's crazy how they're blaming RJ Barrett too, yo. That shit is so fucking crazy. I mean, crazy. RJ is like a Bomani called him Carlton Banks. And he was oh like, God! I had that thought in my head during that final, like, pass the ball to Will. Just yeah. pass the ball to Will. Pass the ball to <laughs> Will. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna be the hero. Ah! Bro, I was watching that and like, like, uh, the two possessions before the last possession, Bomani was like, "Please don't go for Carlton Banks." And those last two possessions, Zion did not touch the ball <laughs> at all. Did not touch the ball once. <laughs> and I was like, God damn. I feel I felt bad for him missing the free throw, and I knew like grown people were gonna come at this kid for missing the shot, and I feel sorry for him and that. So they got me defending RJ. His, his godfather had to get on there, like my godson RJ Barrett executed all the right all the right reads. I was like, God damn it, Steve Nash, what what the fuck, what the fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm good on that. But uh, all right, so let's get into he's these. Canadian. He's Canadian. That's, that's as angry as he gets. Who's the better pro? Who's gonna be the better pro? Zion or RJ? Uh, Zion. Zion. I don't see it with RJ. I just don't I, see it. I think once RJ gets a shot, I mean, because I don't think Zion's going to be able to get his shot off that much. He's going to be athletic, and he's going to be able to be used. I mean, Charles Barkley got his shot off, and he was 6'4". Yeah. Charles Barkley was more skilled than Zion at this point, but they're, they can you can compare those two in a way. No, no, that's, 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 that's real. That's uh, very uh, comparable. Um, but I just don't see him. Him having a longer career than RJ. I think RJ's going to have a better career. Well, he's got more, you know, he's got that body. He, he can't stay at 285 for that long. Right. But, yeah. That's what, so uh, that's what I'm saying. A better career, I feel like but I RJ I still think has, Zion's going to be much better. Um. All right. Before we get into the news, let's stay in the sports really quick because we haven't had Rich on in a while. And I know this, but I want Devin to hear this. So Rich was a longtime Buffalo Bills fan. And, and Rich <laughs> and, and Rich uh, finally got off that narcotic and left hey, that to yeah. go. Especially I after have, I'm clean. Hey, he got I off that I, I'm still on that Dallas Cowboy shit. I'm still on that that oh, that, that sugar, that booger sugar they, part, they got in uh, Texas. Partly due to racist Josh. Um, yes, racist Josh. So he got off that narcotic. Yeah. So I, I asked Rich a few months, a couple months ago, a month ago, like. Have you, because Rich was touting how he's a free agent and he's looking for a team to join <laughs> and he's looking to pledge his allegiance to somebody and I was trying to recruit Uh-oh. him to Baltimore uh, oh, wow. with the Ravens and do and he do uh, and he hitched his wagon on the Kansas City Chiefs. Hey, hey, bro, I promise you, I was like, I was halfway off that narcotic this year and I was going to go to that light-skinned savior because I feel like at least I got 10 to 15 years of fucking good fucking football with that white boy. I mean, light-skinned young gentleman See, right there slinging that rock. Well, here, it was, it was really easy for me, Devin, because the Bills decided that he wasn't good enough to be their quarterback. And so when they traded their pick in favor of getting a corner, I was like, okay, so y'all officially traded me too. I didn't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> but but I came with that. 2016 right now, 2017. Yeah, because at the time I was like, y'all got Tyrod, it's fine. I think we're going to be doing it. Then on every step of the way on the road to what was the only playoff uh, game they've had in 20 years, it's like, oh, I don't know if he can make the reads. I don't know. We he won first. It. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's, he's, not, uh, he's not throwing back shoulder fades. I don't know if he can he can handle the brig lights of the big city of Buffalo. And then, you know, <laughs> and then, they, yeah. after the playoff game, now they're like, oh, let's get this guy from Wyoming who was very racist and came from a small town, even though it was like 75% Latino. And then he went to Wyoming because he sucked in high school and sucked in co- community college and never won against the top five team. But 
he got an arm and he could throw over them mountains. <laughs> Uncle Rico. <laughs> Uncle Rico hey. Allen. And then he gets in the league <laughs> and he's a worse Tyrod. He's inaccurate. Yo. He can't pass. And he it's and he's Michael but he's actually a good runner. That's it's the Michael other thing. Right. Like, <laughs> and then everybody's like, well, he's just using his leg. He's a pretty good athlete. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> Oh, Josh God. Allen is what all the racist white people said Cam Newton was. A raw athlete yes. with a strong arm. Because he is athletic. And he and here's oh. the funny thing. No team this is how you know it, I'm not gonna say reverse racism, but I'm saying it as a joke. This is how you know it's reverse racism. If he was named Jamarcus Allen, people would yes. have a spy on him. They'd be playing him for the read option. When you I've watched some of those Bills games at the end. They weren't they spying were, they that were dude. Spying. They weren't spying him. He would drop back. They played him like he every other white quarterback who can't run. And then he just take off for like 20, 30 yards. It's hilarious to watch. But here's the thing. Now Rich brings the Buffalo Bills bad luck to the Chiefs and causes Tyreek Hill to break his son's arm and mess up the team. No, no, because That's Tyreek straight up is trying to finish the job he started in the womb when he kicked his pregnant girlfriend That's in the right. stomach when he was in college. That's I will right. not accept that, Brandon. You will not put that email on me. I am ringing the bell. <laughs> Yo, he is a terrible human being. And God damn he, it. Is. Uh, he is. He is a horrible human he's being, so but he can run a, he so a 240. Yes. Oh my the God. craziest he's thing so is he was just about to get paid. This is how stupid people are. They were about to give him the bag all star. They were about to give him all the money in the world. Cause you got to. And then he just he might not he might not even play next year. Or honestly, he might. Well, now they're gonna have to get Hollywood. uh, Hollywood from uh, Brown. Yeah, Hollywood Brown. (laughs) Yeah, they should have gotten Hollywood Brown, Mr. Big Chess. (laughs) Uh, Oh oh, no, no, not Mr. Big Chess. Mr. That's what he calls himself. Hollywood Brown is his 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 uh, nephew. Him out of college. Oh, right? oh, yeah, you Oklahoma. talking about uh, old yeah. Miss, dude? Yeah, no, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, you talking about the real fast dude, Marquise Brown? That's, that's his, that's his uh, nephew, yo. I thought his yeah. nephew was the dude to play for Ole Miss. No, no, the, the not, dude that's that's from Ole Miss is Optimus Prime, basically. No, 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 not Metcalf. The other dude at Ole Miss, AJ Brown AJ is the way he's better than Metcalf. Yeah, AJ Brown. I thought that was his nephew. No, no. He was a he was at all the Oklahoma games oh, last yeah. year. Okay, yeah. So the oh yeah, Marquise Brown, yeah, he's fast as shit. Oh yeah. By the way, Rich, while we're here, because I know we keep you long, but I want to ask you this. So I I'm in okay. a mad. I, well, I, by the way, Devin, I quit all my Madden leagues. Just cold turkey. I was like, I'm done. Good for you. I'm done with this stupid game. Clap I'm it up. Here. Um, but I was in a group chat with these a bunch of these people, and we're in like a connected franchise, and so we talk about football sometimes. And they're going yeah. on and on and on and on about DK Metcalf. And I'm like, but can he actually play football? Because I have no indication that he actually knows how to run routes and do anything. So, oh, he needs to. He runs a route. <laughs> he runs that go route really good. <laughs> he's strong. He's, he's tall. He's strong. So he might can do some jump balls. But A.J. Brown is way better than him. Like, So do you think he's going to be a bust, Rich? I think he will be a Buffalo Bill because Josh Allen will try to throw it over the mountains to him. Like, he is so big. He is so fast. My God, look. Like, I'm already seeing friends who I'm still friends with that are Bills fans. Like, yeah, that DK Mecca, you put him together with with Josh, and, man, that's unstoppable. So, yep, you can try it. That one route, they will throw it all. People this is not like, Tech Mobile, sir. People are like, he's going to be Calvin Johnson. I'm like, excuse me. Did you watch Calvin Johnson in college? You guys must be 12 years old. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, Megatron ran like one route because they ran the triple out option. So the three passes. No, no, no. Here's the, the thing. He was no. there before the triple option. He was actually running the route. That's when they had Reggie Ball. And they were actually throwing Yo, passes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's Demarius, right. Demarius yeah, Thomas ran that one route. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Demarius Thomas ran one route in college. Um, but I was like, no, you know who DK Metcalf is? He's a sorry. David Boston, for those of us old enough to remember oh, David Boston. Oh, shit. That's, that's what yeah, he's got, like, negative body fat. Like, he is sucking the fat around people. Like <laughs> yeah, him and Blake guy. Murphy go in a room, Blake Murphy will be 205. Yeah, 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 yeah. he'll be 205 next to him. Uh, all right, let's get to these news stories so Rich doesn't, so we don't keep Rich all night. Um, so, former Watchmen star uh, Jackie Earl Haley 
called out some hypocrisy yeah. in the superhero shows. So he was speaking about. So this was in reference to Zack Snyder, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and there was a whole thing about Batman killing people, right? And so yeah. this is what he said: You've always got like the cops going after Green Arrow or whoever. Like, man, you're going out there killing people, and the characters are always so worried about we can never hurt anybody. We need to do the right thing. But during the whole damn show, the cops are just consistently shooting anybody that moves, and they're judging <laughs> him. I was like, I say that Trying all the time. There's no lie in that. They say that all the time when I'm watching these shows. Like, why are they mad at the Green Arrow for putting bullets in people? I mean, arrows in people. When well, y'all out here putting bullets in people, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And it's oh, it's because we're deputized. Well, now on Arrow, the team Arrow is deputized. So they allowed to kill now. Or can they use lethal force? Like, what's the rules? Yeah, on basically. That? So I thought that was a funny story. Did you see that, Rich? I did. And Jackie O'Haley. I mean, he is the only good part of Watchmen. That scene, well, the beginning of Watchmen, and then the scene where he's locked in prison, and he's like, you guys got to remember, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me after he poured the hot grits on Homeboy. That <laughs> yes. was that was all I needed to see in life. Like, So are you excited for the Watchmen TV show on HBO? I think so. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, my body might be ready, but it's one of those things where, like, I'll, I'll like it when I see it, and until then, I'm I'm just gonna be hanging in the cut because HBO really hasn't screwed up recently. No. I mean, they will screw up if they let homeboys from Game of Thrones make that civil oh, war the Confederate show. show? Oh, they're not making that shit. <laughs> no, they're I think they're still making shit. it. What? Oh, damn! I try to get people to benefit the doubt for making um, up, having the time. Yeah, alt series, alt history series, Confederate still in the works. This was from February 2019. So yeah, it was just damn. last month. Uh, all right. Um, Rich, were you asking, were you one of the five people in the United States that were asking for this Pennyworth show? Nope. I just joked with D Palm on Twitter before we started that I cannot believe they made a TV show based on the ad that they put in the Teen Titans Go movie to make fun of those types of shows. <laughs> I know. I watched the trailer. It's like a teaser. It's like 15 seconds. But Alfred's like, he's like a womanizer. He's like a playboy. And he's like in a secret agent stabbing people and shooting people all in one 15 second trailer. It's unbelievable. I'm like, what is what the hell is going on here? But I guess this is for the same people who like Gotham. I had uh, all these people on mentions today because I, I, I asked the question. I was like, are any of my followers watching Gotham? And I just had people say, I quit a season two. I, uh, Brian from a uh, longtime PW Torch VIP subscriber. Yeah. What is it? What is it? 20? What is it? How many years is it? 28. 28 years subscriber Brian Austin from Phoenix. And he was like, uh, I have 40 issues on DVR. I don't know if I should watch it or delete it. I was like, uh, I would, I would recommend deleting it, sir. <laughs> I didn't know people were still watching uh, Gotham, but apparently, there's people out here still watching Gotham, and they just released a, a image of the Joker, and it looks about as ridiculous as you thought it would look. Um, let's see, uh, Rich, did you watch Krypton? I didn't, but that was one of those good things job, where I wanted job, to. Rick. Oh, it wasn't good. No, okay. it was no, good. No, I like Krypton a lot. I thought it was good. There's a lot of black. People on that show, Rich. So I mean, um, so Rich, this so is black people on crypto. Oh, That's oh, messing yeah. me up. Let me give you the synopsis, right? So the leader. <laughs> so this is so basically the story of Krypton is uh, Adam Strange goes back in time and goes to Krypton because somebody is fucking with the timeline and trying to get stop Superman from existing uh, in the past so Ooh. that he doesn't exist in the present. And so in Krypton, there's a lot of things that don't belong in this time. That are there. It's like Doomsday's there. He shouldn't be there, but because someone's messing with the timeline, he's there. Uh, Brainiac comes to Krypton early to like put Krypton in a city, like in one of his cities on his uh, big, uh, like you know how he mini miniaturizes cities and keeps them. Yeah. He's trying to do one of the cities in Krypton like that. Um, and so Sag L's like Kyle, uh, Superman's grandfather, and that's who stars in the show. And basically. The, so the ruler of the art, like the Krypton army, is um, General Zod's 
um, grandmother who is a black woman and Whoa. yes, a black woman and his daughter is a black woman who's kind of like in a relationship with Superman's grandma grandfather, which is interesting. Ooh, and so spicy. uh and this is a small spoiler, but it's not that big that's not gonna ruin if you decide to watch it. But General Zod comes back in time to help to stop Brainiac from taking over the city and he is a black man on the show. So uh, okay, and the villain takes a whole different dynamic to kneel before Zod. Yes, <laughs> yes, and it's actually really well acted. It's good. Um, it's interesting. The villains look unbelievable. Like it looks better than the DCEU villains, like Brainiac and Dooms- Doomsday. I here. will say he's he's it's right. He's Doomsday right. looks way better than he did in BVS on this show. I have no idea how, but he does. Uh, and Brainiac looks incredible. So if you get it. I- I'm saying all this to say that Brandon really needs a friend to watch the show with. That's what he really needs. So if you get a chance oh, to watch, yeah. if you get a boring day, you just need to throw something on, throw it on, I guarantee you will enjoy it. It's not the greatest show of all time, but it's much better. It's what Gotham should have been, but it wasn't. Well, okay, so I'll, what I'll do, Brandon, is because right now I'm working through my queue. I'm trying to catch up on Vikings. Okay. So once I'm done with Vikings, I will throw Krypton in there. Deal. It's only eight episodes, I think, too. So it's short. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. I can do. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Uh, all right. So, um, Rich, did you see uh, Chris Evans talking about how Marvel supports his anti-Trump tweets? Of course, and that because that makes Kevin Feige yet again the uncle I never knew I had because like he's like the characters are melding. It's you, like you're Captain yes. America, which to me means Feige sees Captain America as someone that would see Trump is wrong, which means Kevin Feige is at the cookout for life as well. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and Ca- Captain America absolutely would see somebody like Trump as wrong. That was the whole point of Secret Empire, that he isn't the real Captain America, <laughs> like. He's become what he's always railed against. Right? He was, you know, people who I read the story. You. I got you. Me, but yeah, <laughs> we know what talking about, right? We know. Evil, evil Steve. What y'all call him on MTR? No, Steve. What they call it? Steve. Um, but yeah, he said that uh, Kevin, when he busts into Kevin Feige, the first thing out of his mouth is, "I love what you're doing on Twitter," which tells me that Kevin Feige doesn't mess with Trump either, which is, you know, cool. And then, uh, then he goes on to say. That yeah, I was a New England Patriots fan, but like I don't know if I can mess with Tom Brady if he's on that Trump train. And he says, if he's still on that Trump train, I might have to cut ties. It's really tough. That was his quote. I was like, look at this fucking guy, man. Look at Chris <laughs> Evans, man. God, I hope he don't go anywhere. Like, you know, nope. like I read that Sam Wilson Captain America run and I loved it. But you think I want Anthony Mackey to be Captain America over this nope. dude? Mm-mm. No, Mm-mm. no, no, get that out of here. So yeah, that was that was really cool to see. Um, so Nick Martin Green from Walking Dead and Star Trek Discovery has been cast in Space Jam Two. So, so I, I see what you did what, there, wait, LeBron. Look, okay. Mm-hmm. So how how do y'all what, y'all do want a whole new storyline? Like, do y'all want more uh, NBA players in, in, in Space Jams? What are we going to do, man? Because it's, it's 2000. It's going to be 2021 when this shit happens. What, what do y'all need from this movie? I just need it to be as crazy as the original Space Jam was. I think that I'm soundtrack straight. to be flames. Yes. I, the first Space Jam soundtrack was dope. That was dope. Uh, I already know when I reviewed this, I'm going to play the Basketball Jones song because that's funny. It's held to me. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> um, and we can get a little penny to get in commercial. God damn it. But listen, I see what I see. LeBron. Apparently, she's cast as his love interest. Oh, she looks like she's oh. been a little bit. Mm-hmm. She does. She. She. Uh... I see what you're doing there, LeBron. I see. I see you. I'm not. I'm not gonna hate. So, Rich, if I could ask you, um, five players. I mean, four other players to be on the team with LeBron. Um, in this movie, like, like how um, in the original was Charles Barkley, Larry Johnson, Patrick Ewing, Sean Bradley, Muggsy Bogues. Uh, who who are you picking? Uh, I would probably say whoever LeBron wants on the Lakers next year, but that's just being <laughs> facetious. Uh, hey, as a Lakers fan, I'm with that. I'm with that. What if they did a combination be... with Uncle Drew? Oh my, I'm with it. Okay, Yo, here's the I'm thing. So with them I... Uncle Drew. 
I think they need to get at least one woman player. I agree. Candace Parker, maybe? And, maybe? Yeah, I'm thinking Candace Parker. Candace Parker's on TV, think, so she probably can be good at it. Skylar Diggs, As far people. as the men, I think at some point, I think the, I think uh, Durantula, mm-hmm. I think, um, I'm trying to think who he's going to not offend. I think it should be Joel and B. Curry. I think Joel, Joel and B would be, be hilarious. In Steph Space Curry, Man. definitely. Cause who doesn't I, thought, that I see Steph's right? going to be a monster. Yeah. Okay. Because mm-hmm. he can hit a three from game. like anywhere, like and just do his little, his little, um, shimmy. his little, yeah, his little shimmy, and just like look at you. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to seeing that film. Should be, it's fun. gonna be good. Um, uh, what do I have here? Oh, all right. Uh, Mike brought this to my attention in a group chat. But what's wrong with the internet, Rich? What's what is with this Ant Man going up Thanos to correct him spicy. and expanding? <laughs> How did well, you what come about up Char- with what, what about my dude deciding that he's gonna sit on a toilet and s- film an Instagram with his wife? Like, what is wrong with you? Because <laughs> Brolin straight up did like he had a picture of himself like with his face like clenched in rage and then you <laughs> zoom out and you zoom out and he's on the toilet and he's like basically like that's why it'll never happen <laughs> Josh Brolin is a real one he he's is. another one that's like oh man like people on yeah. the internet this is the good thing about Twitter and the internet when people when they come up with ridiculous stuff like this this actually makes it funny uh, but I used this I used this article as a leeway I mean a segue what is it leeway as a segue to ask Rich, do you have any predictions for Avengers Endgame, or are you just like, just get me to the movie? I'm, I am just get me to the movie, but I think they're going to be, like, for me, I think out of the original six, one or two of them are going to die. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking one. I think it's probably going to be Steve. You think so? Okay. I think it's going to be Steve. And it hurts Steve my heart to? to say it. Because he has to. I think Steve, yeah, like one of the rumors, like, and it, I think it got confirmed by the commercial. I don't know if y'all noticed, but like in the, and it could be, again, Feige likes to lie to us on those previews. When he's, when when Thor's staring down Captain Marvel, he gets Mjolnir back, not uh, his axe. Oh, I didn't even notice that. So I think because they're messing around with time, one of the theories that people threw around, and it ties into the second Avengers movie with Asia Ultron, Steve, yeah. I think Steve's going to wheel me on here and die holding, like, like basically holding the line. Do his I got all day again. And that's like him basically knowing he's not going to beat Thanos. Damn. And just taking that L for, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. That is not thug tears. Like, I'm going to be balling. Like, I just saw Danny Glover say some stuff. Like Ooh. it's gonna be sloppy, <laughs> and I don't need anyone who knows me to be around because I will not hide it. I am with you. And last Three year hours. we had you we ready? had Rich on on our lost episode of the Avengers Infinity War, which I'm that was one of our best reviews, and I lost it. I felt so bad, but uh, it's okay. If you have the time, Rich, we would love to have you back when we do Endgame. Uh, because oh, happy to, honor to, especially to because. That. I'm probably going to need some like tissues and work it out with some people I trust because it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. A, it's going to be it's going to be a panel on this one. That's definitely going to be a yeah, panel. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a lot of stuff. It's going to be three. I can't wait. I I told my wife I was like, um, listen, I took off <laughs> on Avengers Day Thursday the 25th. I took off of work. I said I'm not going into work for this. Like <laughs> because I live on the West Coast, I'm like. I need to see this as early as possible in the West Coast. I can't. I'm so not, it's not ruined, yeah. So I'm going to the earliest possible view, viewing, unless I get a screen. I may get a screener for it, and then I can just rub it in on people. But um, Damn, big time. <laughs> I don't. I haven't heard from them yet to see if I'm getting the screener or not. But I told my wife it doesn't matter. I'm still going to see it that day. And I told my wife I was like, the day the the minute Avengers Endgame tickets go on sale, I'm texting you and we're buying them in, immediately. I'm not missing out on this. Uh, so, yeah, I can't wait. Um, Yo, here, here's my problem, Brandon. And I'm sorry, I, kn- I knew you were going to no, say something. Uh, 
Devin, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you good? I have a issue because that Thursday is uh, take your kid to work day. Oh. So I'm going to need my wife to like do the baton catch <laughs> as I toss my son at her as I'm sprinting to the theater because I can't take Trey. Tra- like, I, I, I was going to ask you, I did saw- you ever take Trey to see Infinity War or was it too much? It was too much because yeah. he doesn't like, let me, let me give an example. He won't rewatch Teen Titans go to the movies because of the scene where the friends abandon him after oh. the movie gets canceled. Oh. And in the Lego Batman movie, without them ever showing Crime Alley, he realized Batman's parents got killed. And then his fa- the Bat family was an allegory for his real family. So when they left, again, he was bawling. And so, like, if Captain America really dies in front of my dude, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. can't so, be the person, I can't mess my son up. Trey's gonna need a couple is, years. What's for going that. on with Trey that Trey uh, feels bad about uh, people abandoning folks? Like, what's going on? Are y'all up in the grocery store? What no, that's the thing. He's the opposite. He is guy. He's on that Mati tip. He got the power of heart, and he just like wop, 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 and he just sucks it all in. Like this kid. Like I got him. Uh, I put it on Twitter a month ago. I got him when I went from, or maybe three weeks ago. Uh, I picked up my comic haul, and I noticed they had this like Marvel made this salute to all the women characters, and they're divided in all these different areas. And so, like, the last couple of nights we've been reading, and he read about, like, Captain Marvel, and then Shuri, and then Riri Williams. And he was like, wait, she's the engineer? And I was like, oh, crap, now he's going to have to find out about the drive-by. He's like, nope, nope, we're just going to read this book. I will not show you my comics. Not show you the the, the, the picnic that made her. Such a good parent, yo. That's so awesome. Uh, yeah, give him a couple years before you expose yeah. him to this. Uh, cause, dude, that listen, he's a kid. I rem- I was in the theater opening night for Infinity War. People were upset. Grown-ups were heartbroken when that snap happened. Also, by the way, I will say this, and this is not a knock on my black people, but I will say this. There was a lot of black people in my theater <laughs> that went, that clearly never saw any of the other Marvel movies before Black Panther. And then they saw Black Panther and they got into the Marvel movies and they showed up and saw Black Panther get that get that uh fade away. Not- and they were angry. Uh- <laughs> they were uh- angry. And I was like, uh, I didn't want to be the one to tell him he's gonna be back. I didn't want to be that guy. I let him I let him be upset. Uh speaking of Marvel, Angelina Jolie is in talk to make Marvel debut with the Eternals. Uh I think, I think that- we can all say that that means she's hired. Well, I mean, once Marvel finished up or Disney finished up acquiring Fox, I figured it was going to be time for them to stunt a little bit. I didn't realize they were going to go nuclear. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to get Angie, bring her in. Like, by the way, Denzel is going to play Blue Marvel. And- Don't do that. Oh, Hold on. Why'd you have to do that? that Why'd room? you have to do that? Oh, God, oh man, damn. I can't that was- see that. Now I cannot oh, see that. Shit. Oh, oh, my God. He'll be oh. so good as Blue Marvel. Oh God! Oh. He would. oh God! Especially if he, oh. I would love him to play it as like old black man, but smart, like like yes. like a genius, that... like a genius oh. version of uh his character on um fences. Train Day? No fences. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Like, but play him as a genius, like a genius, like Blue Marvel is. That would be so. Oh God, I can't believe you that. That beard. Oh, oh my God, yo God. Oh, Rich, why'd you have to do that, man? Now I can't unsee Damn. that. Damn. Sorry. Uh, All I thought of was when I saw the book of Eli and how, like, I was like, yep, whoo! that's him. That's him. Just add a little shock of white hair and you're done. All right. Yeah, we now can. we're going to finish this episode <laughs> with Zack Snyder. Damn it. There's the whole thing about release the Snyder cut on Twitter, all of his stands. Or we, cause, and, he, and he egged this on because they asked him, is there a cut? He, oh, yeah, there's a cut done. Let me give you an idea of what, and this is not on the cut, the quote-unquote cut that doesn't exist. This is not on the cut. I wish Mike was here because Mike's such a Batman stand. This is what Snyder says. Uh, the original Justice League that Chris and I wrote, we didn't even shoot. The actual idea, the hard, the hard idea, the scary idea we never filmed because the studio was like, that's crazy. If WB's telling him that this was crazy, just to let you know. <laughs> 
This this is before they made. So we all saw Batman and Superman. This is what they said was not good enough or too crazy. It's a long story, Snyder added. The truth is that the nightmare sequence in this movie was always my idea that all the would all that would eventually be explained, and that we would end up in the distant future where Darkseid has taken over Earth and where Superman has succumbed to the anti-life equation. Oh, okay. There are a few members of the oh, Justice League. Anti-life equation is something that's really cool, Devin. If you get a yeah, chance, you should look it. it up. It was in uh, the Justice League in the uh, New Fifty Two, right? Yeah, yeah and yeah. then um, the Outsiders. If you look at Justice League Outsiders on DC Universe, the first letter of each episode says anti-life equation, and I got a little shook. Okay. Yeah, anti-life equation oh. is dope. Um, over Earth, where Superman has come to the afterlife equation, there was a few members of the Justice League that had survived that world that they were fighting. Batman broke a pact with Cyborg because something happened. They were working on it. It's just something happened. <laughs> he broke a pact because something happened. They were working on an equa- equation to jump Flash back to tell Bruce. What? <laughs> like, what? What is that? Oh, I didn't even say the other parts. Apparently, Darkseid boom tubes into the Batcave and boom kills tube? and kills Lois <laughs> Lane. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why is Lois Lane in the Batcave? Yeah, that's what I was... Oh, because Lois was supposed to be in there to be protected, and then it got turned into, uh, you know, Batman, I fail, you know, because he, he needed to have... Ben Affleck just emote for eight seconds. <laughs> Jack, Zack Snyder was the worst thing, and I and I like I feel bad for Zack Snyder because of what happened with his daughter and things like that. But yes, absolutely. Besides, it, just speaking strictly on the movies, he was the worst thing that could have happened to this universe, and he set them back so far that now when they actually have good stuff, we saw Shazam. It's really good. Like Shazam is really, really. But people don't believe us. Really good, and but people are so, like, jaded. They, they're jaded. They're jaded, and they're not going to go see that film. And I think they will eventually because of word of mouth, but they're not. And then you have stuff like, this. and not just this. I, we talked about this in the show a while back, but he's also the same guy that said that if he did Batman Begins, Batman would have been raped when he was in. Yeah. Like. Why? What is this? Like, what is this? Well, Snyder's biggest issue is, and I saw a couple of comic writers mention this on Twitter, his biggest issue is he looked at the Batman Nolan trilogy, which as much as I enjoy the Nolan trilogy, or at least two thirds of it, or like six eighths or whatever, however you want to break it down, where like I didn't enjoy all of the final movie. He saw that as like gospel instead of the shadow tethered version of like what Batman is as a mythos because it didn't get to the heart of family. It didn't get to the heart of how protective he is of his family. Like the Lego Batman movie did that better than the Nolan Batman. If we're being honest about Absolutely. it. Yeah, definitely. And so Snyder sees that and he's like, I want more and just add it, make it more metal and not the good metal that was in the, the comics. He wants it to be like, yeah, Batman gets raped and all this other ridiculousness. And then he goes and makes Superman, and the best thing he ever did with Superman was the scene with Pa Kent. Yes, like that Pa-Kent, was emotionally yeah. like that tore me up. I cried in the theater watching really that good. because it was it took me on a journey of like that's a dad man. Like I was like that dude. Like that's how much he loved his son, and even though they were just gotten into a fight, instantly the switch flipped, and it's like no. And then he kills Zod, and okay. Like that's the thing. He can't not land the plane. He's like Vince McMahon. There's always got to be that extra thing he adds to stuff when it's already been seasoned. Like it, it, it's too much. And Fear so not, I have returned. What? Oh, shit. I am a little drunk, but it's all right. It's fine. I'm back. Mike, I've done my thing. The show is over. To do. It's over? It's all right. I figured it would be, but you know, I just... And you just okay, interrupted wait, wait, Mike, Ricks. what's your thoughts on, what's your thoughts on the, the Snyder murder verse, and why do you love it so? That's what I heard. Okay, that was what I heard thing. on the street. I've, I, I was hoping you'd ask me questions, because I'm <laughs> damn near drunk enough to answer any of them that you might have. Oh, God. As far as Zack Snyder's creative 
potential goes, fuck that shit. Uh, what happened to him was a travesty, and I'm sorry that happened. No excuse to murder my favorite characters, though. I mean, come on, man. It's, Mike, you sound like Batman full... movie practically practically sells itself, and you fucked it up. <laughs> Why do you sound full white man in the bar? What? What are you gonna say? What we all got to get along next. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't hear what you said. What'd you say? Whatever. Let Rich talk. He was. He had a point. You just interrupted him. No, I was just talking about the murder verse and how. <laughs> I just wanted like, you to know that I was back. He may continue his point. I did not mean no. to interrupt. I am so sorry. Oh. Mike, you have the. F- I am leading, yielding to you, sir, because I need to hear this defense. I need to hear like. Mike, did you see what I, Zach I just, Snyder said in a recent interview? About his uh, version of Justice about League. The, he keeps talking about the Snyder Cut that does not exist. Yeah, and how Superman came to the anti-life equation and that he boom tubed in the Batcave and killed Lois Lane. And yeah, that did that not stuff. happen. It just, that just didn't happen. Oh, it just doesn't happen in your world? Well, I mean... I want an anti-Snyder <laughs> equation. Yeah, yeah. Listen, yes, DCU yes. is finally <laughs> on its shit. It's going the right way. Yes, it is. You liked Aquaman. I thought Aquaman. I was loved Aquaman. Just I don't okay. know why you have. A... I love Shazam. You... Shazam was great. And so I'm there sure we go. Wonder Woman will be good. We got Patty Jenkins back. It'll be good. Wonder Woman will be good. Yes. The Joker movie. Uh, we'll see. That doesn't count, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So, Mike, you missed the whole show, but you'll be back next week. Rich, thank you for joining us again. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, such a big Pleasure's fan of mine. your show. I've been thankful to be on a few times. I love it anytime you invite me on. Uh, but uh, everybody, please go subscribe to the PW Torch. But before I go, Rich, just give a give the audience a little synopsis about um, about the Torch and what you guys do over there and how they can subscribe and all that good stuff. Sure. So the Torch is a pro wrestling newsletter founded by Wade Keller a little over almost 30 years ago. Uh, I do two shows on the audio side of things for Wade. Uh, the first of which is I'm the co-host of the East Coast cast every Wednesday. I do VIP with Travis Bryant, who is my host. We talk about everything like what you just heard now with the Why So Serious pod. We do it, but it's more wrestling. And then we'll stumble into everything else. And then on Saturdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, typically, I have the deep dive, which is my show. I dive in over an hour with whatever the subject is of the week. I try to bring in as many guests as possible because I want to hear what other people are excited about because I think kind of like what we talked to earlier about wrestling, it can be as awesome or as horrible as you let it be. And so I want to hear more from people what gets them excited about it and how we can kind of enjoy it together rather than like even when Brandon and I talked about Roman Reigns, it wasn't an hour of why Roman sucks. It was like, here are the things Roman does well and here are why people kind of beat him down. And what, why, what's wrong with that? Why can't we just see some stuff that works for him? And so I implore you, if you enjoyed anything you heard tonight, if you didn't, you know, just ignore me. But if you did enjoy, definitely uh, uh, find me on Twitter at Rich underscore fan, F-A-N-N, or find us at The Torch at PW Torch. Yeah, definitely go do that. I've been a subscriber for a long time. One of my one of my biggest reasons why I really enjoy the show is because of Rich Travis and Cam. So, like, I listen to the Wrestling Observer, and I subscribe to them, and I like them. I like Brian. I like Dave. I enjoy their I enjoy their content. But what I really enjoy about The Torch is that we have perspectives about wrestling from people like me and different voices. And so I can, I can turn on the East Coast cast, or not just the East Coast cast now. Rich has hosted the, um, the Wade Keller Pro Wrestling, what's it called? Wait, re- oh yeah, the Ray Gray. He's got the pro wrestling podcast pro wrestling and post podcasts shows. And post shows, yeah. Rich has hosted it. Cam has hosted it. Travis has hosted it with him. Uh, Cam just did a show with Bruce Mitchell this weekend. Rich has done that before. Like you're all over the network, and I can, I can get the perspectives about other things that you don't typically hear other wrestling journalists even broach. I've listened to some podcasts where they don't even bring up the race angle and Kofi Kingston's uh, angle, and I'm like. How can you talk about this without talking about race? Like, it's all over the angle. <laughs> How can you not talk about it? And they're either not equipped to talk about it or they don't want to make a mistake or what have you. But part of that is because you don't have a diverse group of people uh, on your platform. And Wade has done a really good job of uh, giving you guys the opportunity to come on there and, and do those things. And it's, uh, and it's, been, it's kept me a subscriber 
Uh, I'll probably be a subscriber anyway, but it's definitely kept me a subscriber for for as long as long as possible. I love it. Um, but thank you, Rich, for coming on. Uh, we'll have you back on later this month uh, when we do our end game. It's April first now, so later this month when we do our mm-hmm. end game uh, review, uh, that'll be uh, really awesome. Um, next Brandon week, Pug, comic book one hundred and one. Can I yesterday. get to the plugs? Oh, sorry. Jeez. Yeah. Next Damn, week we're gonna have on two more guests from the PW Torch. Uh, Cam has been on here a couple times before. Cameron Hawkins <clears throat> and Rich and Cam's co-host Travis Bryant, who's the first time he's gonna be on the show. So that'll be really dope to have them on next week up uh, reviewing WrestleMania. So two straight weeks of the wrestling content. Mike, you have to watch WrestleMania so you can participate in the review. Listen, I was going to say, I don't watch wrestling, but I find Rich to be an inspiration to us all, and I will do it. <laughs> and I'm back. I'm going to get on this wrestling grind. I am a little bit. Besides the point, I will do it. For we Rich. Got, uh, we're going to make Mike watch WrestleMania. Somebody's not, That actually should be really interesting. Somebody who doesn't watch right. wrestling watching this. Listen, I watch Us For You. I might as well. I don't watch horror movies. Nothing against. I just don't like horror movies. I scare very easily. I stayed up all night the like, next few nights because I'm a huge bitch. But I will watch wrestling for you as well because you are important to me. Okay. Okay, drunk man. So Travis <laughs> Bryan and uh, Cameron Hawkins will be on next week as the host. Uh, me and my old man Wade do a, a spinoff podcast called Comic Book History 101. Uh, it was kind of inspired by Rich Knows It's by uh, Deep Palm and Chris's Character Corner. So it's kind of a mix yeah. between the Character Corner and what we used to do on here, uh, where uh, we talk about characters, mostly correlate them to the movies and TV shows that are coming out. So like last month we did Captain Marvel. We're doing Shazam next week. Uh, but we also do other shows. So like this past week we did our top five uh, women comic book characters in honor of Women History Month. Uh, so we're going to do top fives and histories of and different things like that. And basically, we took the comics off this show so that we could focus it more because we really didn't have a lot of time on here. So uh, you can find that at Comic Book History 101, where we just basically just talk comics. Uh, current comics, new comics, old comics, characters, storylines, all of that. Um, <clears throat> and you can find this show, all, both of those shows in our show on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast app. That was a lot of plugs, but go listen to all that. Uh, once again, Rich, thank you so much for have, being on the show with us. It was great having you on. Now I can go watch Raw because I got it on DVR, and we'll be back next week. Thank you. <laughs>